<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you asked for it. I asked for it. Begged. Damn it, I'll say it. I, I begged. Begged. <laughs> begged, borrowed, and stealed to get the man back on the podcast. We have Trey, the explainer, one of my favorite past guests. So I'm very happy to have you back on. Big, big welcome to you, my friend. Oh, I'm happy to be here. It's a, it's an honor to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. A lot has happened since the last time that we had you on. I mean, the the big the big thing being um, your face reveal was the big one because the last time we had you on, you were anonymous, and I know you were waiting to hit a million subs on YouTube before you got that face reveal done. So, Mazel Tov on the face re- on the on the million, and also on the face reveal. Mazel Tov oh, on the face, baby. Mazel on Tov the on the face. <laughs> Uh, thank you thank you yeah you I had imagine... the face reveal and then to me which was even bigger this was even a bigger discovery in the archaeological community but <laughs> the girlfriend makeup oh, oh yeah beautiful yeah. yo uh, and that person who drew you oh my god yeah the Good sketches Lord. I, was like, oh, <laughs> yo, I, was, I was like sweating when i saw that dog yo. <laughs> It was I, so good. I, I have to imagine that a face reveal when you're very handsome really isn't that hard to do. Gorgeous. Imagine like gorgeous. Imagine being having to do a face reveal and just being like, "Fuck, man, this is gonna <laughs> suck." Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, obviously, yours was you had don't know where to go but up. Like, you just I mean, oh, you, as you. soon as you like posted it, everyone was just like, "Holy shit." Crazy explainer. What the hell, man? I, I saw it, so many messages in like different languages. There was like one that was in like Persian. It was like, this is the most beautiful <laughs> <yeah>. man. <laughs> I love that. Like, yes. I love that. Dude, my buddy did a uh, a face reveal one time and then he wasn't, he's not the best looking guy, but his follow up tweet like an hour later was like, I just lost over like 2,000 followers pretty <laughs> oh, much. No. I was just like, bro, that, that, that sucks. Not, that that's sucks. What I was about. That's what I was worried about with something like that. But I, it, went, it went very well. I'm very happy with how it went. Yeah, how it went. I'm sure. I could. All, I only saw people just sweating and uh, like I am in amazement. It actually makes me wonder, what was the what was the reason you wanted to start off anonymous in the first place? Did you have like a reason? Oh, my, I guess my reason was I was like a little kid when I started, it. I guess I oh, was like fair. Yeah. in my early teens. Um, so, and, and, and I guess like, I didn't like that. I was like a little kid and people kind of like, oh no, say that like your, your opinion's worth less or something like that. Sure. Um, yeah. and, and just for anonymous stuff, I kind of like being anonymous, but it, like at a certain point I was like, yeah, like I've kind of grown up. I'm kind of happy. I didn't reveal my face then too. It's like, I was like, not that good looking kid. Um, I think I'm decent now. I'm better. I'm better than that. Um, and then like up. the pressure to actually not the pressure, but I, like people have always asked like, oh, what's your face look like? Just out of curiosity. And then like I would take pictures like the, my ex doing my makeup and stuff like, oh, I wish I could like post this. So like I held off on like posting that kind of stuff for like years. And then now I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to post it. So yeah, it's pretty fun. And it's pretty you, uh You inspired uh, Stone Toss did a face reveal oh, because God. of you. He was so inspired that. Uh, <laughs> it's like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. it. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> do, you, do you see yourself making a new type of content now that you're not anonymous? Like, do you see yourself doing more like talking to the camera type stuff? Or do you still think the video essay format that you have right now will remain consistent? I'm I'm planning to keep it as is for the most part, but my next video, like my next big video, um, depends if I t- I may turn this uh the the current situation into a video. We'll we'll see. I, I, don't about that. Yeah. I don't know, but um, the next video that I have planned right now, there's a bunch of um <clears throat> talking in front. There's a a little bit of talking in front of the camera stuff. So okay, um, okay. sprinkled in like it's mixed in with my older format. So I'm just gonna test it out. Could go well. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited for it. I was watching. I was in preparation for this. I was watching your Bigfoot video uh, that you had uploaded, which was extremely detailed. First of all, did not realize there were so many different names for Bigfoot. That was like that list of the names. (laughs) And so I noticed that one of the i got to pull it back up. I was looking at the list and it's like one of the names as you're scrolling through, the name was literally just like oh my or something like that it's just like <laughs> oh oh like the oma the oma yeah oma and i was like, like i that. feel like that's not a name i feel like that was just somebody just like oh my it's like onomatopoeia <laughs> <laughs> but uh so, that, so like we're, you're talking about like the native american um names for sasquatch list yes. um which the video is like breaking that down like are these actual names for sasquatch kind of stuff and and yeah there's some crazy ones there's some crazy ones where there's like 
a K, an exclamation point, an A, an exclamation point. Like there's explanation points and like colons and semicolons in the word. Yeah. Um, and I was like, how do you even pronounce that? And I learned I that there's, that's like linguistic stuff that like the explanation point is like a clicking sound. Like it's like like oh, oh it's very, really i, I mean i noticed your i noticed your comment on the video here that you had pinned that you were like i'm sorry i'm just apologizing about some of the mispronunciations but <laughs> i were people really giving you shit about that because that is like a hard task it, like, it's hard pronunciation <laughs> in a language that you don't speak is that's a hard task there's like um there are a couple that i mispronounced um like uh yeah because because in the video i talk about something that's called the this is like the hairy man um and it's it, it's it's native name is Mayak Datach Datach, and the last pick I thought it was Datat, um, because I heard uh, Bigfoot like people who believe in Bigfoot using Datat, um, and I talked to the native representative and she was like, no, it's Datach, and like I was like, what? How do you how do you how do you like pronounce oh, that like last man. bit? And we, we had to like create like um, I had several conversations with her, like I kept on giving her drafts of the audio. And she's like, that's not exactly right. The <laughs> pronunciation's still a little bit off. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I like I, I listened to her and like I listened to her like four or five times and then like wrote down how I heard her say it. And was like, we're creating our own like linguistics here because like yeah, it's uh, it's a different language and there's not like equivalence for it in English. So for the sound. So I don't know, it's it's, it's fun. It's fun stuff. Do that Very little impressive. research to uh oh. Because most people, it's become like a Marvel writing trope of like mispronouncing something and being like, I don't even know if I pronounced that correctly right after and then moving on, (laughs) which I I hate seeing that in videos. It's so (laughs) stupid. It's so stupid. But uh, I I used to do that in videos and and I heard people like criticizing it. It was like, yeah, I I guess I should try a little bit harder to get it. I'm sure the first guy who did it, it was fresh and original, but it's like every fucking video with like a weird word or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's good practice, and it shows that even if you don't pronounce it right, people can't say, "Well, like, well, you're not even trying." It's like obviously you are trying, and you do care to pronounce it correctly, and and I think it's a great. I mean, in general, it's a great like documentation of some stories that you know maybe are localized to really small circles. You know, oh yeah, do, that's what I loved fun. about it because you're right. These are stories that will never get out, really. Like unless right, exactly. The interviews. Do, them. do you do you find when you're like doing research for something like this, like in particular this Bigfoot video, and you're talking to people, maybe Native Americans who have their own stories or or other sort of Bigfoot historians, do you find people are very forthcoming, or do you have to kind of pull information out of people when you're asking these kind of questions? Oh, it depends. It depends, especially with um, especially with that video, because um, I, I sent out like ten different emails to to ten different tribes, something crazy like that. Maybe maybe ten or seven, something um, that I thought were like the most promising, like Bigfoot sounding, mm-hmm. and only one got back to me. Like only a single really? one. That was the the Tule River tribe of California. The representative was like, but like the thing is, she was like fantastic. She gave me so much information um but yeah yeah it's like frustrating because like some people i don't know they're busy like this is like pretty low on like their priorities i'm assuming talking to some like random guy about like bigfoot (laughs) um um, but i i managed to email a whole bunch of others after the video was that video was created so i might make a sequel to it um but yeah yeah it's 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 an interesting topic because like people get it's sensitive information because it's like um religious spiritual tribal information some Mm -hmm. people don't feel super comfortable talking about it or like they they um I've had a couple examples like a, a couple where like they were like offended that it was even like asking like hey like this this uh Bigfoot believer claims that your tribe has legends about Bigfoot is this a Bigfoot and they're like no that that's I that's bas- that's close to an insult to the spirit really like, to call it that to call it like Bigfoot like an ape man I find that wow. insulting I was like I was like oh I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry I was just just asking <laughs> just asking that's it's not me it's not me I'm just asking it's not me that. other that guy said it not me yeah that, that's very interesting I, do you ever ask these that. people like if they what their personal beliefs are like if they believe in it oh yeah 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 like like um with some of them like i asked because like, some of them are very were very spiritual people um and i was like what's your how do you view this um in your spiritual belief and stuff so yeah i, I asked them their opinions on it um yeah yeah with, with like i i do this i've been doing this lately with stories where like not just like reading somebody else's article or book but like talking to them directly because that, that i think that's much better because you get like answers to your questions specifically mm. um 
And so I've been trying to do that. It's been more like journalist than than anything. So it's, it's nice. It's pretty cool. Because like most of the time cool, I realize yeah. you can just email people. Like that's the crazy thing is like, yeah. they'll be like a professor or like a Native American uh, like chief or something. And you're just like, um, I can just email this person and they'll respond. Oh, it's yeah. crazy to me. And, and it's people, crazy to people me. respond to emails way more often than you than you think, especially if you're asking something specific, because most people don't get that many emails. You know what yeah. I mean? Or like, it's mostly junk. So when you Dude, actually Matt get an email from someone... I wrote to him in <laughs> high school before he got big, before he got big, and he sent me an autographed CD. Okay. Yo, so, really? that's awesome. It's true. You can just email people. Bro. You can just it's email wild. people. I, dude, I had my, my email story, which is really like not super exciting, but kind of interesting is that, that when, when I was a kid and I grew up in South Florida, there's a, there's a museum of like science and natural history here or something, which is very cool when you're a little kid. I went again as an adult and it was less cool. But when you're a kid, they have like all kinds of like, put your hand on a ball and your hair stands on it. And I have that kind of museum. And like there, I remember being a kid and they had an aquarium section in there and they had one fish that was a giant grouper named Boomer. And I remember as a kid <laughs> seeing it and his name was Boomer because they do this weird thing where they flap their fins together really fast, which I didn't know. And they can, it's actually so loud or powerful that it would shake the tank. And so they would call him that, like that was his like form of communication. <laughs> and, and I looked up, I was like, I don't know. I was telling that exact story about like, oh yeah, there's a giant fish at this aquarium. And I was telling that story. And as I was talking about this this boomer fish i was googling giant groupers and i found out that they actually live fairly long like they have like a 20 year oh, lifespan yeah. or something like that and and so I, it made me wonder i'm like i wonder if this fish is still around and i literally oh. emailed the aquarium the or the, the museum and i emailed the fish i emailed <laughs> the museum and i was like hey like when i was a kid i was at the aquarium and i used to go to this you know, I used to see Boomer there and I was just curious, you guys still have Boomer there? And they replied to me the next day and they were like, Boomer actually got too big for the tank. You know, we were glad that he left a lasting impression on you, but now he's at this like sanctuary out in like Orlando. And here's the email for them. And then I was contacting those people and I was like, hey, I knew this fish at an aquarium and now I heard that he's here and he might be like 20 something. I was just curious if he was still around. <laughs> and I learned from that email that first of all, all groupers are hermaphrodites over the course of their life they're born male die female they live a long time so boomer was actually no longer a he he, he was a she at the end of <laughs> of their life and then and they emailed me back also this sanctuary and they were like we are so we loved boomer we're so happy that they left a lasting impression on you they just passed away last year no, but like no. something like that yeah they had like it was like they <laughs> no. were they were like one of the, they they were like lived out the remainder of their years like they were super happy and the people that came to visit our sanctuary they were super popular because they were super social, but they like just passed away last year or something. Oh, and I was like, no, damn, dude. but they were like, if you're ever in the area, like ask for this person's name and we'll give you like a ticket to the sanctuary. And I was like, that was nice. So, you know, but it was a fun little, like, <laughs> you know, it was just all emails. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like some moral that's of the story. Beautiful. That's, that's a awesome. Lot of How do you dispose I, I had a of a fish? Do you throw it away fish. or bury it? Like, I have no idea. It would do be you, cruel like, to let him? the other ones eat it, right? Like, that would be cool. It's but... sort of a circle of life, though. Like, you kind of I, just... I always wondered Consume that. me. <laughs> yeah. <Boomer. laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fucking lovely bones. The uh, 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 I I feel like we need to get into the drama. Okay. Dude, as soon as I saw it on my timeline, I was like locked the fuck I was in. Like, Let's dude. go. Like, <laughs> it, it's funny that you talk about like emailing something where somebody like died recently that could like. Uh, give you information because it's yeah. kind of involved in the story too i, I found some developments oh really so yeah it's oh, is, are they but, yeah, claiming yeah, yeah. that's the now figures. why they can't give you the info someone's dead it, it's a little detail I, i'll get into i'll get into well, it for... can, yeah I, I can i can i just say i i don't want to take credit for the whole thing i don't know if you no, guys it's you guys this. you guys you guys should take credit the, fir I the first that. time that we had you on i remember telling you about this motherfucker forrest Kalan. <laughs> i remember <laughs> telling you because i was following him for a while and a lot of the stuff that you talked about in your videos or were tweeting about had some crossover with the stuff that he was talking about in terms of like cryptids and 
you know, archaeology and stuff. And I thought he was an interesting character because, and specifically, I want to say in the episode that we were talking about, we were talking about the thylacine because that was a creature. Viewers at home, the layman's term being the Tasmanian tiger, which is an animal, a marsupial in the shape of a strange beast. It looks something like a <laughs> mix of a dog and a kangaroo and almost like reptilian in some ways, but it's on all fours. To me, it and just looks like a dog with stripes. It's got a weird mouth. How does it the look mouth... reptilian? The, it's got a crocodile oh, I get, mouth. You know what? It's got a I, weird I, head. I'll give you that. I'll head. give you that. I'll it's an odd-looking creature, but the, but what's interesting, and I think there's the reason that perhaps Forrest, and in general, I think it's sort of a cherished animal in crypto, I don't know, cryptid discussion, and also just paleo discussion, is because it's very recently extinct, and we have footage of it, like black and white footage of this animal, which no longer exists, which lends to i don't know gives you a little bit more of a feeling of like just what it was like to have it around and oh, yeah my my grandpa was alive like alive at the same time as no the way. Scene, which is crazy like he's is he's crazy. a he's 98 like he literally just turned 98 he's a very elderly man wow. <laughs> he's like a prune um and <laughs> he 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 was alive the thylacine went extinct i think 1936 yeah um, you're right he would they, they there was overlap he could have seen one he was like a little kid but he could have seen one and that's like a crazy concept to me that that, that is people crazy. Are alive when the thylacine yeah. is alive it, that is crazy i mean the fact that like you know there are animals that just haven't been sighted for uh you know 40 or 100 or 200 years and they kind of are like presumed extinct and i think that forests sort of i don't know his is lean is that the thylacine declared extinct might exist in small populations be one of these that just hasn't been seen in a long time and i remember being on podcast with you a year ago and talking about this and i want to say had you heard of him at that time or had you did you know who he was no no you guys introduced me to him and i started following him um on on youtube and on instagram and stuff like um after as soon as we got done with the the recording so i've been watching him i've been i've been interested he is he's an interesting guy and i mean to his credit because we're unbiased here obviously we're team trey but we're our unbiased here <laughs> the like he has posted and i have reason to believe that that's not doctored it, he has posted there are a couple examples on his instagram at least in the last year where he has it looks like they have but like what's the word declared unextinct a couple of creatures that hadn't been seen in a while there was like a bird yeah. that they got trail cam footage of and like a crocodile or something yeah like the that. bird the i actually have first-hand information with that bird if you're talking really? about let me um because i talked to the guy who discovered it um the really is it the black naped pheasant pigeon let's um, look it up i'm gonna say it was probably. it was in, there's a video there's a there's a famous video of this of um his name's jordan jordan and his um his, another scientist named doka i think that's how you pronounce his name and um they're looking at the trail cam and they're like they're like oh my gosh like they're like cursing they're like cursing and like super super happy it's an awesome video and it's them yeah. rediscovering the black uh black naped pheasant pigeon um after it, it hadn't been it hadn't been seen to scientists at least since like 1882 crazy um, lord so it was crazy. thought to be extinct it was thought to be extinct because they had other expeditions and they had didn't find it and then like they found it in 2022 um on a trail cam and it was this big, huge, huge story. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this stuff happens. This stuff does happen. Um, it, it's rare, but uh, it does happen. So, yeah. And so I talked to I, him, which is kind of cool. I, I'm curious. Well, I, I, when you talk to him, is that something that's in a video or it was just like an unreported conversation? This is this is this was this week. I emailed him. Oh, I emailed him. For, oh, nice. Yeah, I emailed him and a bunch of other scientists for their opinion on the thylacine story mm -hmm. um, with Forrest Gallant because he he that that occurred in in Papua New Guinea. Um, he went on an expedition in Papua New Guinea and uh, was successful in getting evidence of the the uh, black naped pheasant pigeon. That's a doesn't have a good name. That's a very clunky name. But yeah, yeah. So he that's a very good success. Oh my gosh, look at that cat. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of cryptids, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I have Venus. I have this the photo of the trail cam of this black naped pheasant pigeon yeah they need to come up with a better name for this but the but yes this is the clip that i saw which i'm pretty sure that forrest had posted to his yes. instagram or something when he, it happened. he has no relation to it i guess he was just passing along that information interesting um, okay this is a big We're trying to story. take credit 
or trying to take i don't like this yeah girl. You i don't know, like it's actually, it's, don't like it's, actually it's actually it's interesting, interesting. There, there's yep. allegations of that um by scientists like there's a a dark an article by a website called undark and i think the mm-hmm. the writer was named andrew or something like that and he interviewed a whole bunch of scientists um about Forrest Gallant's claims of of discovering um rediscovering extinct species there was a caiman in uh Colombia that he kind of claimed uh that he rediscovered and then a Galapagos land tortoise and um mm. the author of this article um interviewed them interviewed the scientists and the scientists were like uh Forrest Gallant kind of took credit from us like um really this is you can read the article it's their words um it's a it's a colombian uh like a scientist biologist that's published papers and stuff and he's like forrest gallant the word he uses is parachute scientist or something like that parachute Mm -hmm. um something where where he has come in and kind of like dropped acted like he he's taken the research of a native a native scientist he's a scientist and kind of like taking credit um this is this is their words. This is not me. It's it's them, but it's the scientists. And there's at least two examples of this. So, um, well, I, I will say that 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 pigeon that was rediscovered. It's interesting to hear you say that he was not involved in that because, and I probably shouldn't say this without having the video pulled up. I'm pretty sure that when Forrest posted that video, it they show the footage and then they show him side by side with somebody else, maybe a local, and they're kind of like high fiving and like really excited. They're so which happy, dude! I love leads it, it I love leads it. you to believe though that is it Forrest he, Gallant high fiving? No, Forrest isn't mm-hmm. in the video, Harris. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not in the video. That video was recorded video. by Jordan. Wait, I think wait, that's wait. a different guy, bro. Yeah, I think it might be Jordan. It. Okay, I shouldn't. Jordan's speak the one who ass, took but the I video. do want to pull it up because I'm okay. I want to find this now because I want to say that they found it's like the trail it cuts from the trail cam footage to Forrest looking like he's in a viewing room, and it makes me think that's that's interesting because I've spoken to 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 Jordan to Doctor Jordan and uh, and yeah he he has no uh, no maybe not doctor he might be a a post grad or something like that but um, he. He 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 does not. He has no association with Forrest Gallant. Um, interesting, dude. I don't think he he's of a him? con man per se, but I would not be surprised if he started doing like. Do you remember in the old days? They still have copies of them, but they're like, they claim they found mermaids, and these dudes were literally oh, the just Fiji sewing. Mermaids. Yeah, they where yeah, they're yes. sewing a baby monkey to a fish, and you're just like, like what this the is hell? Ridiculous, bro. <laughs> well, like, I the- I suppose like. The question, and maybe there's an obvious answer, but maybe, Trey, you could shed some more light on this, is we should start with the question of why, if, let's talk about maybe the thylacine, if Forrest had, what would be his motivation for declaring that it's not extinct? Did he discover it, or he's saying that, what is the, what's the deal? the claim is he put a video out um, four weeks ago called Why I Think the Thylacine is Still Alive. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like 25 minutes. Most of it is just kind of him repeating the standard information. Like, what is a thylacine? What happened to them? Why are they extinct? Um, and then like the final third is him talking about like, I have my own firsthand um, information, special information, um, where he says a woman out of the blue emailed him her name her name is rose he didn't give a last name he just has said rose um says that she, and this is a woman who he says has done work with um papua new guinea singing dogs which are like a um it's a relative of the dingo they're like these kind of like uh wild like, dog. uh of, they're dogs they're cool they're cool like little uh they're special to papua new guinea they were kind of like thought to be on the decline and anyways What's he says this again? woman who was singing dog? papua new guinea singing dog do they howl or something oh. what's with the name they must they must howl. i don't i don't have a whole they must make some noise right papua. yeah it's papua new guinea just picturing a dog, dog. sorry saying, hello my baby hello my honey but <laughs> okay please <laughs> continue <laughs> yeah sorry anyway I was yeah no no they're good they're good i'll look more into it um but anyways he's saying that this woman rose has done work with them um and anyways there's the singing dogs he says he was talking to her and in papua new guinea there's the singing dogs and then there's according to the locals a striped dog, a striped dog. And it's his opinion that 
um, the striped dog that they're talking about, that there's rumors of, um, are uh, thylacines. And he said that Rose emailed him or texted him the story that um, one, two of those striped dogs were picked up by an, uh, a villager in like the Papua New Guinea highlands in this valley and um, kept them as pets. One died and then the other, one died like right away and then the other one they were puppies. One died right away. The other one died later because a dog savaged it or killed it or something like that. Mm. And the local villagers um, ate it, consumed it, and then um, put the bones in a fire pit. And he says that Rose, I think Rose, he's, he's this. OK, this is where we're getting into contradictory information a little mm -hmm. bit where there's a few discrepancies because there's a he, there's an interview with him two years ago. Um, talking about the same story where it's not Rose, but an intermediary of Rose was doing this. But anyways, it, uh, uh, somebody came in there and found the bones and um, the bones of this supposed thylacine that died. And they were charred. They were they, apparently they were gnarly. And they took a picture of the jaw. The best thing was the jaw. And, um, and uh, Rose or Rose's representative um, did not take the jaw. They left it there. So all we have is this photo of the jaw and mm -hmm. um, Rose supposedly sent it to Forrest and Forrest has seen it and says it's extremely compelling evidence. It's super, super distinct. Um, you can tell like he, mm -hmm. he can tell that it's like not a dog. It's a thylacine jaw, um, which I'm skeptical of. I've talked to zoologists and thylacine jaws and dog jaws are actually its skulls in general are very similar. Mm -hmm. um they're actually notoriously difficult to tell apart um i think oxford university has like an, an exam for its students where they have to learn to tell um wolf jaws and thylacine jaws apart and it's like a common um richard dawkins brought it up in a book that it's very very difficult to tell the difference but anyways he really? says you can tell the difference um so that's his opinion that's his opinion anyways from he a has photo, this photo it would be twice as hard wouldn't and it? not not just from a, a photo, photo but charred. A, the charred remains of a bone charred remains like, of a jaw yeah. um so anyways he claims that it's very strong evidence and he in the video um says that it's it's convincing enough compelling enough to warrant a five million dollar expedition to the region and he's um he's he's trying to raise funding i i he reached out to I me see. afterwards and said he's not asking for money um i don't know if that's entirely um honest because he on his on his twitter account he retweeted somebody um adding e elon musk saying like elon musk give uh give forrest gallant five million dollars for this expedition to to mm. discover the rediscover the thylacine um what's so that kinda... gay resort sandals <laughs> Sandals, uh, yeah, yeah, yo, million. there's this jaw at Sandals. I need five <laughs> yeah. million dollars to go. I need exactly. to go to Sandals, dude. It, so it, he he says he's not asking for money. I'm kind of disputing that, but okay, whatever. So apparently, this jaw is very convincing, and you're like, okay, show it in the video, show us the mm -hmm. jaw. And he does not show the jaw in the video. Instead, he shows us a picture from a recycled article, it's a museum's picture of a a thylacine jaw that they have in their collections it's a picture that's years old mm. um and it's and it has on the text he says the this is not the actual photo the actual photo is being guarded by a, a uh variety of trusted experts um whatever that means and so interesting i what saw is that the alleged motive for it being guarded that's like, what i was trying to you figure not out. be a, why he, would you if you had to play devil's advocate why wouldn't forest be allowed to leak that photo right 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 like and and it would be useful you could get tons of zoologists i know tons of zoologists just on twitter who mm -hmm. love this kind of stuff and would look at that photo and give their professional opinion in like minutes they would be like mm -hmm. they would drop everything and look at it you would want that right you'd want them to be like this does look like a thylacine jaw like this is very compelling blah 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 you can fact check everything you know Right. Um, I see no reason. He's given two different reasons for why the photo is hidden. Um, the one he gives in the video, this was his initial version, was that he's worried that the location would it would give away the location and people would start hunting the thylacine. I kind of dispute that. I think that's a weak reason. You can, mm -hmm. of course, blur the photo. And then it sounds like it's a photo just of the ground, you know, like it's of like a fire pit. So what what information on the location would you really get from it? Like, 
Pollution I remember that. Sir. You know that Aren't guy they in on Tasmania? Twitter? Isn't that it, where it so is? This is in this is in Papua New Guinea. So this is Papua New Guinea or West Papua. He's given kind of two different. They're slight like they're different countries technically. Okay. Um, but well, yeah, well, this is Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is there. There's thylacine fossils, so it existed there at some point in history, but that was like thousands of years ago. Um, which makes it unlikely that I don't know. It makes it even a little bit more unlikely where this is a region where thylacines have not been seen for a while. Like, has are it, they like, a prehistoric animal? Existed. Yeah, it, well, it was. It, what, sorry, what? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, the, technically, you wouldn't call it prehistoric because humans have walked with them. Maybe I'm not using the right terminology here. Yeah, but, it's, right, it's, it's it pretty much a modern like animal. It's, a, it's as prehistoric as like a, a lion at this point, you know, because it was alive yeah. in the in the 30s. It's like, oh, crap, it's not really prehistoric. Like it was prehistoric. Like humans coexisted with in prehistory. I guess um, my question it, is, is it in the living fossil category in the sense like, was it unchanged when we like, the fossils we find of it from dinosaur times and the image we have of it now, are they the same or was there any evolution um, or? It, it wasn't alive during dinosaur times. It's a, it's okay. a relatively young. That's where um, I got caught up. Okay. Yeah. The, the fossils, the fossils are not like, the fossils are like probably like in the hundreds of thousands of years old, not like okay. millions. Okay. Um, or they might be a couple million. I don't know. I'd have to look at the, the data, but yeah, they weren't alive during dinosaurs. These are relatively young fossils. Um, so yeah, they existed in Papua New Guinea a long time ago. There's no evidence of them in any recent memory of them being there, but Forrest Gallant believes they're there right now or, or thinks that there's strong evidence that they're there. And so, yeah, so anyways, yeah, like he, so the reason why the photo's not dropping is because he's worried about the location. I kind of think that's a weak reason you can do stuff to the photo to publish it. And I saw his video and was like, I don't believe this. <laughs> I, smell, yeah. I kind of smell, a, it smells a little fishy to me. Um, and I, I I don't know if I believe that this photo exists. Forrest Gallant, please publish the photo. So, yes. and, and, and prove me wrong. I would love to be proven wrong on this because I, I think you'd think for something like this, if it was if it was really compelling evidence and you were trying to raise five billion dollars to do an expedition out there to prove that it was true, you would pretty much want to give your like the elevator pitch would include the photo. You the would photo, sell, yeah. you would be like, look, this is a photo. I have reason to believe that this is this for such and such reason. I'm like I'm inclined to believe that he is, even if he wasn't being malicious about it, I do get the feeling a bit that even, you know, in in a positive light, he might just be caught up with, like, wanting to believe that this thing really does exist. And and maybe, like, uh, what there's a word for that, but, like... Um, He's naive. I don't know. Naive or just that it's kind of like, like, no. it's kind of... Re reinforcing a like a pre-existing belief even though you know yeah. it, he's got like confirmation bias that, that's what, what was, it is that's yeah. the word yes yeah yes, and that's yes. why that's why you'd want to publish the photo you could publish it to, and so you could get people who do not have confirmation bias you know like right. you'd want people that are skeptical so that you so that you just in case you're getting fooled because maybe he's getting fooled maybe this photo was well, it's, it's not a thylacine and it's, he's being tricked. How would we know? We, he hasn't released the photo. Here's my right. evil theory, okay? You two, you're sweeties, okay? You can't think evilly. All right, so first of all, we have the Colombian scientist calling him a parachute scientist, whatever. Yeah. I agree. He's yeah. kind of forcing himself into this. If this if this does ex let's say the photo is real. Let's just go off of that. If this photo is real, not posting it, because once it gets posted online, no one's going to care like who discovered it it's, we're just going to care that the thylacine exists if this guy can get to papua new guinea and take a video of himself with the creature or finding it he's going to be solidified in like he, he'll oh, be yeah. like a full-fledged yeah, yeah. scientist yes. like to me that would be the only reason for doing this so strangely that's but yeah. i don't know how tr how true that is but no, I could see that. I could see that, like, it, there's a level of ego in there. Like, like it's still, I think it's still bad practice as a scientist. For, oh, 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah, but, like, I at least understand that. Like, just go out and say it. Just go out and say it. Like, why not? Why not? Screw it. And for somebody like him, like, just admit, yeah, I'm holding off on doing this photo because I want to save it until 
I discovered the thylacine. I want to be the one that discovers it. I want this lead to be mine. Fine. Mm -hmm. Just just say that. Just go out and say it. But he's given like other kind of other excuses, like instead of that, like, so there's the, I don't want to disclose the location, um, which I think is weak. And then the second one, when he responded to all my um, tweets, all my inquiries to him, calling him out, um, he said, well, the photo's not mine. I, I don't own it. An institution owns it. This institution owns the photo. And I'd have to ask them to release the photo, their permission. I would have to mm-hmm. give, I would have to ask them if they'd be okay with that. Um, and I, I followed it up like, okay, can I get some information on this institution? Like, what's its name? What type of institution is it? When was the photo taken? Who took the photo? What's mm-hmm. their names? Um, and he ignored me. He didn't answer that. Um, he yeah. saw it. He saw it, but he didn't answer it. Have you considered um, throwing a little winged eye- eyeliner on and re-asking him? Because I, I think yeah. if you shush it up a bit. Uh, yeah, you might. I think he'll response. be responding. Yeah, I'll, 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 I could dress femme. I could dress femme and, and really do, do that. Like, do, do that. I, I should do that. Send us. That. We'll make sure it's femme enough. So check with us first. Send us the pictures. And then once we okay, you can send it to because that because that alone would get a lot of people's attention. There you go. And then he's got to respond. <laughs> exactly. Right? Uh, he's got to respond. He just so, responds to you in full like drag, also for some reason, and it just keeps yeah, getting. Yeah, he's like, he's like, <laughs> like, yeah. We're like trying to slay. We're like trying to like get pretty- <laughs> yeah, just having a slay off. Yeah, that's good. Did, did so he? He, he oh, said he would put. He said he would put me in contact with. Um, he said he would ca- talk to the institution. And his primary contact um, to see if they'd be comfortable talking to me privately. Um, and I was like, oh, great, great. Here's my information. Here's my email. If you need any more information from me, here you go. And he just mm-hmm. just hasn't said anything. I gave him till Friday. I gave him till today. And um, he just hasn't said anything. He hasn't said anything. So I tweeted him one last time. Um, like, hey, I still haven't gotten anything. Like, I would love to see anything any evidence like anything to corroborate the story you know because like he he, i can't even talk to people that 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 can i can't talk to another person independent person to ask like hey is is forrest galan telling accurate events to what you remember because he doesn't he hasn't given me any names there's no names yeah it's an unfalsifiable story it's his word against it's not even his word against somebody else's word it's his word and that's it. We have to take yeah. his word for it. And what I like and, so and, you much know. about you, though, is it would be so easy for you to kind of clown on this guy and start a Twitter war. But I think you'd be the first to admit that I think you would be happy to eat your words on this subject yeah. like if it was real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I told him I told him if the difference between a real archaeologist. And whatever that guy's name is, okay, yeah, it's not true. It, it's uh, like I, I literally told him, like, if he published the photo today, I would like stand in front of the camera and like print off every word that I said on a oh. piece of paper and eat it. And yeah. <laughs> I could do it. Literally. Yeah, like, fine, I'll dress them for it. I'll, Maybe I'll a feet a post or something. Or something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe something like, po- that. like I'll like. And and I've been debating if I would if if like uh, I can put out a reward for it like like because I I I'm calling his bluff here I'm calling his bluff I'm willing to do a lot of stuff to get this photo out for the sake of science for the sake of transparency. Force contact um, me, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me, please. yeah exactly. Because uh, I mean, do do you feel like right now the response from the rest of the uh? you know cryptid community or biology community that follow maybe the two of you has it have people been mostly in your corner about this and being like yeah we do need these questions answered or do you feel like people are being like yeah like like responding badly to how you've been most people are on my side i've been checking reddit i've been checked in the cryptozoology reddit i've been checking the thylacine reddit and thylacine reddit it's like r slash thylacine. Are they That's actively awesome. looking for it, or it's just like they love thylacines? They love uh, it's, it's kind of both. It's like a, a lot of recycle. They don't have much to talk about. <laughs> yeah, there's not much. It hasn't going been on, much yeah. in, in almost a hundred years, but that's fine. Um, and then the cryptozoology Reddit. Um, somebody's been posting updates on it, and um, most people are on my side. Most people are like, wait. Because most people, so there's there's several people I've seen that thought the photo he showed in the video was the real photo, despite him having red text over it saying that this is not the actual photo. People watched the video because it was only on there for like a split second, for like maybe like one or one and a half seconds. I'd have to time it, um, mm-hmm. and and they just saw the video and were like, oh wait, that wasn't the photo. He, that wasn't the photo, and like yeah, that isn't the photo. Interesting, um, interesting. So 
my and so most people are on my side like i'm looking at the reddit right now they're like hold up forrest gallant has a thylacine photo and isn't showing it um, <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like and, and a lot of people are like it's hard to ignore the sheer marketing and hype of it all guy is a grifter i've got a photo but it's not mine and i can't show it trust me <laughs> so like most yeah. people it's most true, people though. are kind of on my side because his excuses have been very weak so far Damn, I saw Jesus. someone compare it to the I have a girlfriend, but she's she goes to a different. She's in Canada. Yeah, she's she's in Canada. Canada. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. I I do I do feel like it's uh, I think one of the major challenges that if let's say Forrest is a con man and 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 really what he's been doing is kind of just like futzing his way through to to, to celebrity and to stardom. I I do have to say that faking your way into celebrity in the science community is possibly the worst place to do oh, it yeah. because it's a community of skeptics. Like every, like you're going to hit this point where let's say what he's saying is not true. You know, maybe give him the benefit of the doubt and it is true. And there's some bureaucracy reason why he can't show the photo. Sure. Okay. I'd be great to see it. But if he really is just faking it, it feels like he's hitting the wall like right now in real time where people are going to start. If he is faking it, the other biologists and the community of scientists that are interested and are following him are going to really quickly like break you know, down that it, house of maybe cards. it's bad yeah. maybe that community is a little strong but the science community isn't the brightest which you would think are they you were. sure do you know about do you know what mind exploitation is Oh, no, I don't know. My okay, What's it's that? a comedian, and he pretty much went on. It was before Fiverr existed, but it was something you know when you can just pay a guy in the Philippines five dollars and just have him do something for you. Sure, yeah. He did that, but with a bunch of like, I need a scientific essay on Jews are secretly made of peanut butter, like stuff like okay. that was asinine. And the guys wrote them these these articles, and he pushed it through. And got it published. They were all, all every single one of these was published in a scientific journal. You guys should look it, into it. But it's like yeah, I'll look into it. Interesting. There's That's tons interesting. of crap I that think, can get through. I think um, like like I, I I kind of really agree with with Beetle. <laughs> with, That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, where like it's hard. It's harder because you're right that you there. That's been half. That's happened. Stuff gets through. Um, it depends on the scientific paper um depends like because there's degree like science like there's there's a like they're all like human beings they make mistakes and stuff mm -hmm. and like there's a their level of scrutiny depends on the paper that it gets through i'd have to look through it um like stuff like serious stuff most scientists will probably be able to call stuff out um it, it, but people make mistakes it happens but yeah like the scientific community is bad like to to pick a kind of fight like this with um because like we because i i'm like i'm being like a little crazy about this where like he's he mentions it in a video and he's basically moved on he's posted mm -hmm. like six other videos that are not thylacine related and um and i'm like wait 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 wait. this sounds like <laughs> yeah, the most compelling on. evidence <laughs> ever in 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 decades since the thylacine went extinct this sounds like the most compelling lead and you're just going to move on you're just going to move on yeah. and i found out that he's been talking about this story since 2021 forever he, he, goes, he goes he goes inter he interviewed with somebody he gives this story it's slightly different there's some discrepancies but the story oh, about there. the picture about well, the picture it, it's wow. interesting that you even and it's been that hidden when it's i just hidden. went to oh, his i just went to it said sorry here i just to interject but when, when i went to his instagram page and i was scrolling through to try to find that the black naped pigeon that was just like rediscovered i was scrolling through and i, I, I can't find the video it's just buried somewhere but he has tons of thylacine content. Like he's been talking oh, about yeah. thylacines for his entire career, which is especially dubious that now that he maybe has some evidence, you think like, man, wouldn't you go out of your way to show that this shit is actually real, that you're not oh, yeah. just a crime. You should make this like, like if this is so compelling, you're asking, you're, you want funding for $5 million. This should be your thing. This should be yeah. your thing for like the whole year. Um, like, like you should be hyping this up. You should be like interviewing, you should re like get hooking up with, uh, hooking up, uh, connecting with all these scientists. Maybe sure. you can hook up with scientists. Up I don't with know. Them too. <laughs> it's like, Oh, <laughs> and like and no instead he's he in this unnamed institution have sat on their asses for three years at the very least three years and done 
as far as I can tell, nothing. They've released mm-hmm. nothing. They've kept the, the photo hidden for three whole years. And I asked them, when when will this photo be published? Do you have a, a rough estimate, a rough timeline? And said nothing. There's it's an, it's going to be hidden for an indefinite amount of time. So that's why I want to put pressure on him and hold him accountable. Like, I don't want this to disappear for another three freaking years. Like, right. you know, and it gets well, me pissed off. I'm getting a little heated. But yeah. I'm shocked I'm, Rogan hasn't grilled him on this. Oh, yeah. Do you know if he has? Well, hi, well, him and Rogan are like butt buddies. I mean, they're like... Well, Rogan's the type of guy, if someone said, I have evidence, I'm not showing it, he, would, he wouldn't let that slide usually, even if he is butt buddies, as Harris called them. Sorry, maybe that's not an appropriate term to refer to those guys, but they do. <laughs> no, that, that me works as for Joe buddies. Rogan in that. Kind but of, I, I sure. do. I, I mean, my okay, my I'm thinking out loud. Another like, in and I believe in our lifetime, may, maybe maybe not that recent, but I know that. Um, okay, not in our lifetime, but the. Sorry, oh, coelacanth, coelacanth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the ancient fish. Up until just now, I thought it was colacanth. Really glad I didn't say that. I thought it was colacanth. No, I I, I thought it was too. It's sometimes I call it relicanth, which is a Pokemon based on it. Relicanth, yeah, which is clever. I like that. I like that. But yeah, no, it says coelacanth is the way that it's pronounced on uh, Wikipedia here. But that's another one that was believed to be extinct and then rediscovered. It looks like in 1938 was when they Mm. were like, oh shit. They're ugly and, motherfuckers. Well, here's they are, but here's my question, and I don't know if this is something that's documented. Maybe there's somewhere a story of it, but like, I wonder if, like, how, what was there this like slow release of the info when they discovered it, or was it something that immediately hit newspapers at the it's, time? It's, Do you know what I mean? It's funny you bring that up because I am I'm researching that right now um mm. I, I i know the answer with something like the black uh naped pheasant pigeon um which okay. is that story with the video that story broke they 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 released the video like a month later like weeks later mm. it was recorded in september and released in november um like they didn't wait they didn't wait yeah. wait and i've talked to jordan who's who is is partly responsible he helped take the video And they didn't wait. And he told me what their budget was for that expedition. Um, Their budget, according to him, and I've talked to um, another person who does uh, expeditions in remote regions of the world. This one is specifically Papua New Guinea. So this is a great comparison. Um, It was uh, like $40,000 or $50,000. And that is like one percent of what Forrest Gallant is asking for and I asked for several people's opinion on the 50 million dollar um funding budget is it for this 50 million it is oh, sorry, sandals sorry, five vip five million, million. Oh, I was five million. sorry like five million, million. I, I we'll produce a new avengers movie with this fucking five like, million five million but, yeah. but five million is still crazy five million is still yeah, crazy it's a lot of think money. It, like from a scientist according to a scientist an expedition probably should cost in the thousands of dollars at most maybe a couple yeah, hundred it's a, thousand it's a bunch yeah, of guys sitting in his in, in like bathing suits in the middle of a wood the woods for like a few months like how much could it possibly have right, you been right, in, on in, an expedition or just an archaeology dig I've been on two archaeology digs um, for, uh, I think both of them were for around a month. One was in Poland, one was in Greece. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not as remote, but it, it was it was relatively like it was like you're you're in the countryside staying in like a, a, a kind of crappy motel, you know, <laughs> like, right. um, and Do you, you have a no, breakdown? With no AC, that kind of stuff. What's up? What's the breakdown? Like when someone does ask for so you you haven't been on an expedition expedition, but is that just like plane tickets, food? Um, I assume you don't have to buy tools or anything. I assume you already have that type of stuff. Well, I'm also you, assuming you, with an archaeological dig, you have like like excavation equipment, which is something yeah. you wouldn't need, and that's something like discovering a live animal, rediscovering yeah. a live. Because yeah, yeah well, like, don't you just need money for food? Isn't that it? Food and board, like to, I, I need to talk to Jordan more, but yeah, like basically for an expedition like this, you're b- p- paying for um transport, ha- food, and housing. That's probably gonna be the main. You don't even need house, as my big. cousin told me. He acted like this was a big secret, but you can sleep outside anywhere for free, right? And, right. Uh, and he, especially he's... if you're staying in remote Papua New Guinea villages, like villages, yeah. like you. Yeah, he does it in cities, like a... which is not great. <laughs> oh, but... but there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So like it, we're and and I did the math on it. I did some of the math. I was talking to my dad. My dad knows finance stuff. And we were we were giving like okay, re, like realistically, let's go crazy. Let's not let's be really really generous to Forrest Gallant and be like price everything super expensive. We're like ten people, ten people. That's a little big for an expedition, but okay, ten people, um, six months. He's saying six months. Um, he he said he says that they need a helicopter. I've talked to researchers in Papua New Guinea. They typically say you don't need a helicopter to get places in Papua New Guinea. Mm. Um, but and whatever. Um, and we were like, we were doing all the math. We're like, okay, a wage for all the people at like, I don't know, like 30, 30 dollars a day or something like I don't know, yeah. whatever. I don't know, something we were we were just doing the math. We were throwing the math crazy and we ended up at something like <laughs> six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollars. And then we're like, let's be generous again to Forrest Gallant and say that the cost is double that. It's double yeah. that cost or triple that cost. She's like, screw it. Um, yeah. And still you would end up at like 1 million or yeah. 2 million, 5 million, that money, where the hell is that money even going to at that point? Cause that's yeah. just, that's astronomical amount of money. It's more money it than a lot of people would see in, in a decade of their lifetime. And you're saying it for a six month expedition. It is. And you, you have, <laughs> it's like you said, you have to imagine there's no way there's more than 10 people on that thing. Cause as you mentioned that I'm like, yeah, like you couldn't even have a large crew on this because there would be too much of a risk that you would be scaring away the animal that you're yeah, trying exactly. to find. You need yeah. to have like a small group of people and pro mostly probably locals. It would make the most sense because they know the terrain. You know what I mean? They're going to be able to like, you need a guide. And they're going to, you know, in theory, maybe you would have somebody on there that has said they'd seen it before, which is going to be somebody who's a local. So it's like, yeah, the, yeah. it's crazy. I wonder if it's he's getting scammed. Like maybe uh, maybe know. his contact is the one asking for this amount of money. Well, that's the problem is that if he is getting scammed, then it's a confirmation bias issue, because if he really does believe this is true, he's being too like lenient in his judgment i think like he should probably be looking at i mean i remember even it's funny it, it, may, it makes me think of like did you guys ever watch like ghost hunting shows as a kid like the ones that were oh, on yeah, TV. Yeah, of course. so classic <laughs> i remember i used to really like the one which i think was just called the ghost hunters there was like ghost adventures which i always hated because that one they really go way over the top in the story and they're like you know, and then and and they'd just be like, "Is there anyone in the room with us?" And if they bring a medium, that's when you know it's over. It's over. <laughs> like if they bring a medium there and nothing's happening, the medium is just gonna oh, and they're gonna be like, "Oh my god!" You know what I mean? But it's, and that's how you know it's fake. But I remember watching Ghost Hunters, and I liked those guys because even though a lot of it might have been baloney, I feel like they went into it with this mentality where they were specifically assigned to debunk the ghost you know what i mean that they would go there and be like actually your ac is leaking and it's making the creaking noise that you hear at night or something like that you know what i mean and i felt like most episodes that i watched of ghost hunters even as a kid i was like these guys are legit because they're not trying yeah. to they're not trying to sell you on something you know what i mean they're they're trying to go there and say and then there were a couple times where they would go there and see something that they couldn't explain and it, it was like the whole, you know, roof came caving in because they would just be like, oh, they were they were like, we can't say this is a ghost definitively, but we're not sure what the fuck this is. And those were the episodes that I was like, holy shit, this shit must be real. So when you see a scientist like scientist like Forrest and he's like really gung ho about this is real, this is real, I feel like it probably would benefit him to take an angle that's more like i can't confirm that this is true you know what i mean like i feel like yeah, there's enough it, compelling evidence but a b and c he he's trying and he's tried to do that he's he's been a little bit on the defensive lately where he responded to me he's like these are just my personal beliefs um which i think that's kind of a, a non-answer um he he's been trying like where he's saying that this story happened this photo exists he as he like like he's seen the photo with his own two eyes um so he's making claims about facts here like that's a like he's stating that as a fact the photo exists he's mm -hmm. seen it um the in the events he described happened 
Um, these are not just like his personal opinion or beliefs or anything. He he's saying this is fact. So all I'm asking for is a little bit of accountability. And like what you said, the the with that ghost, those ghost hunters, they have like a level of integrity. Like that's good. That's what scientists are all about. Where you mm-hmm. um you put your own like personal opinion and what you want to happen beneath the science. Like that the science and the evidence is what takes precedent everything else is is secondary you like you don't like as a scientist you should be willing to admit that you're wrong and that like even though you want to believe it you you have to say that evidence doesn't support that and that's all i'm asking for i'm asking for evidence that's all i'm asking you hear for. that like, dr fauci admit you were wrong this wait, wait, entire wait, time wait, no. <laughs> well, the whole thing just i think we talked about this on the first episode we had you on trey but it really yeah. just strikes me as the um that story of that guy who goes to Africa and shows them a picture of a dinosaur. I think it was a brontosaurus, and they're like, "Oh yeah, there, we have those oh, yeah, right yeah. over there." And it's like, and Kilian Bimbe. I, yeah, I, I yeah. That. That's from <laughs> like, a, that's from uh, a Monster Quest episode. Yes, it's like yes. Yeah, they could be making that up, you know. Like I don't know. Probably, probably. Because that's but the then thing. It, is some but people that like Balby Ape. Wasn't that real? Oh yeah the the the. the... The Billy Apes, Bill, Billy, Billy Ape? Apes, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Gal- I think Galante is the one who introduced me to that. I think not first. You know who? You no, know, you know who's obsessed with talking oh, about yeah. these is Joe Rogan. He he brings this shit up. Like he, he at least during the era that I was watching more Joe Rogan, like probably back in like 2015. You had a Joe something. Rogan era. So this wasn't was when you had the blue hair. No, it was kind of just when I had like a lower barometer for just like like good content on the internet and joe rogan i to his credit i think during this time he did have some interesting guests on and specifically that's where i found like forrest galant was the first time that i heard of him was on joe rogan and i thought he was interesting and uh he talked i'm sure to him about these billy billy apes which are they're real they're they're real they're real they're They're um, a subspecies of of uh common chimpanzee like i think the problem like that's the thing is it's not like a straight up wrong story it's that like details are true Mm -hmm. but it's been kind of blown out of proportion um and i think that's a thing that forrest gallant does a, a, a fair bit too that aspects of it are true and i think that's more of a problem you know that like it's not just a totally made up story it's just being told in a kind of incorrect way. That's I don't know. It's the pro- scientists have to deal with this all the time. Whenever like a new species of dinosaur yeah. comes out, the news article has to say relative of T. Rex, and you're like, yeah, yeah I guess it yeah. technically is a relative yeah, of T. Rex, but are like, so are we. <laughs> like, well, it's funny. It's funny sometimes. Like I, I, I've <laughs> noticed this already, just in my limited knowledge. But my, I have a love for dinosaurs, but also limited knowledge. But the like i love it's really interesting when like a dinosaur or something specifically an ocean creature is like first discovered whatever remnants they'll show you you can see on like the wikipedia article like the first estimates of the size and it's literally like three football fields in length they're like this is the largest (laughs) fish which has ever existed and then it's like actually on further research like now more conservative estimates actually was like the size of like a microwave or something didn't they didn't they just do this to the megalodon did they I, shrink I heard it? this with uh, Dunkleosteus. Dunkleo, where, D- Dunky, yeah, that guy's yeah. fresh. Yeah, yeah. Where uh, it's with a lot of stuff where the the skull or like the facial um, parts are what's primarily known. So it's a mm-hmm. lot of like estimate. And you do this with with a, with a lot of extinct animals. This is a huge problem because a lot of times you're just finding like whenever I watch Jurassic Park, I kind of laugh a little bit in the introduction of Doctor Grant, and it shows his his dig site, and he's like brushing, and like you see a full velociraptor skeleton it's perfect it looks like it's like it, it was just in a sandbox um and you're just like yeah that that's that's not really what most fossils look like most fossils are like a huge mess and you got to get like a drill and like acid to actually oh, get God. to like the bones and stuff um and it, it's super super time and then like you end up with like ribs and arms and like finger Yuck. bones and stuff i get you get mm. this with archaeology too like archaeology like a lot of times um you just end up with weird fragments like i in greece i was working on a death pit a burial pit where oh wow um, some somebody had been uh a greek nobleman had been like burned like he his his ashes were there and post dug through the pit post death yeah yeah uh, it was not like practice. Or okay okay um where like they built his 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 uh tomb and then burned his body and left it there and we we had the pit you could see the outline of the charcoal 
and you and we dug through it very very slowly because as soon as you get to that you have to dig through it very very meticulously and um we were looking for rings we were looking for bones we were looking for anything we were looking for cool stuff because that, that's mm-hmm. typically where the stuff is because when the body burns some of the I found absolutely nothing it was a, really the, the, all, all was there was just charcoal, 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 that's charcoal. Crazy. And then we got underneath it. There was nothing. And we we're like, oh, oh. And that's most that of, sucks. of archaeology and paleontology is like you hit a lot of duds. Like you, even when you think you, like something was there, you end up with nothing. You're like, oh, shoot. And so like that whole and that was a whole um, summer. That was a summer. That was a summer dig. We found nothing the entire time we were there. Perhaps the dig was the friends that you made. Yeah, well, yeah. it's true. It's yeah. true. It's the true. The it was the it was the Greek, the fat old Greek guys I made friends with. <laughs> oh, yeah. they must! Uh, I bet learned. they loved you, Mister Walking Greek Statue. Dude, <laughs> I just did a little archaeology last night because I got blackout, and I'm looking back, and uh, I, I had three hour conversations with seven different people on Grinder, and I I don't remember <laughs> any of it. So I'm I'm gonna have to dig through that in a bit. They they taught me on. they taught me how to say say um. <laughs> They taught, they like, I was trying to learn their language and I accidentally said something wrong. They were like, uh, there were figs near the uh, fig tree near the uh, the dig site and we were eating them and stuff. And they taught me and I was like learning the language and I said something wrong and they just started laughing. And I and I actually said, like, um, I can say this because I'm queer. I said, they said, they, said they, they it's like basically the Greek equivalent of like fag. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, really? yeah, that's good. <laughs> Which is, it translates to like fig tree, like fig tree. And like he explained it to me because like they were like, this is difficult to explain through the language because like we only know a couple words of each. And he just went like, and I was like, that is great. <laughs> oh, that's like yeah, the that's universal. The uh, universal that's like, so good, dude. Funny. And I was that's like, so these good. Greeks are awesome. And these are these. So these were the Greeks that lived at the dig site. So the dig site was wow. in the town. Um, so like, there's diggers who like live there, and like they've been doing it for like decades. Um, so anyway, anyways, I don't know where I was going with this, but yeah, like most most of paleontology and archaeology, it's very very hard to get reconstructions of what you've dug up. Because you get fragments. It's a lot of fragments and there's big pain, but it's all you got. So what can you do? It is kind of incredible. (laughs) Well, well, it it is. It is incredible. I think like to, to that same point that like that, I mean, that fossils exist at all, like bones, like the fact that like there's an organic matter that will survive millions of years and can be discovered later. And that it gives us kind of like a hint to our history and stuff like that is kind of amazing. Fossils, the thing about it? fossils that's interesting is that they're not organic matter. They're organic matter that has been like replaced with mineral. Like it, like it's been, it's oh, like really? a cast. Oh, almost. is there no yeah, bone left? There's no bone left. Like with more recent oh. fossils, like in like the thousands of years, you get actual bone. But with like dinosaur fossils, like it is the, the, it's, it's difficult for me to explain. But yeah, like it's like that the sediment and the minerals have like like it's it's turned the soft tissue is turned into minerals through like a chemical process where really? it's like a cast it's like a it's like a cast of like a body almost wow Yo, tell me why this is wrong because i'm dumb you both are smart oh that's cool why are we not <laughs> you're so adorable why are we not <laughs> digging more in places like russia and antarctica where like i, I didn't they discover a full woolly mammoth flesh and blood and everything like is it places that are frozen would it be possible to find an actual dinosaur is this silly there I, there's a couple um with uh with mammoths yeah like especially like recent stuff like stuff like that like tens of thousands of years old um like things have mummified like with with mammoths and stuff there's a couple mammoth mummies and like body parts um i i saw a reason there was a cool one where it was like a a whole uh dire wolf um mummy or pup was, are those real puppy. yeah yeah dire wolves are real what? Dire wolves are real yeah but they don't look like how they do in game of thrones dire wolves are basic they look basically like regular wolves just big like wolves right yeah. yeah they're not even that big they're not even that big um oh, there are a the whole hell? bunch of them in california you can go to um la if you live in la or live near la um see la brea tar pit has like a whole room with uh direwolf skulls because oh, there's just cool. tons of direwolf falling crazy. into the, the, the tar yeah yeah um but no uh dinosaur the problem with dinosaurs and i like that idea i like and it hurts me to to say that dinosaurs there's probably not too many soft tissue of dinosaurs because like 
the time scale we're talking about is just like so long huge yeah if they were frozen if they were ever frozen um the continents have moved a bunch by then we're like by now mm. they've probably unfrozen and then refro unfrozen and rotted and like um, the nuggets in my freezer yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. well like, i mean it's like, it's, yeah. it's crazy I'm, I'm reading about mammoths also i had pulled them up because we were just talking about them and I mean, I think I knew that that mammoths did exist alongside humans, like at some point, I thought like early humans, but they, I, I didn't realize this, but a, woolly mammoths were literally alive up until like a, about like 3,500 years ago. And then, yeah, and really? Then, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, they were, they were alive at this, on, on an island in Siberia or in Northern Russia. Yeah um at the same time the pyramids were being built by the egyptians what like that is like crazy. yeah are they crazy. bigger they, than it elephants was a small population um these ones were miniature so this was like an island population of mammoths and these were like the last last remnants like and they were little they were little guys they were i think they were smaller than your your average elephant I'd that's have to look crazy the, so the crazy man have, have, um, have but, any of the efforts to like i know that i remember a long time ago hearing that there were concerted efforts to use the dna and try to clone a mammoth or revive them is any is any of that real or, to your knowledge um i i think like i've heard that conversation it's brought up like almost every year is the thing it's like you see a news story where it's like woolly mammoths uh will be back by 2017 yeah something like that there's we'll one that i think is literally 2017 by 2025. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's yeah. like stuff like that and and like, so I'm a genetic, I, I'm, I'm a genetics major. I study genetics in, in college. Um, and, and yeah, there, there's, there's, there's continual attempts to like, cause I think mammoth has been like, like some of it has at least been sequenced. I know that I th I'm pretty sure hmm. of that. Well, let me, I can double check, but I'm pretty sure mammoth DNA has been sequenced. Um, so presumably, yeah, 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 yeah. It's been sequenced. It's been sequenced. Okay, yeah. So, so cool. woolly mammoth nuclear genome has been sequenced. We have mammoth DNA, um, and yeah. So it it is uh, theoretically possible. The problem is, um, and people have tried it. So there is a species of ibex, like a horned sort of mountain goat. Yeah, I'm aware um, of this. that went extinct really recently. It was like probably the last hundred years or something, and they um, cloned it. And then impregnated a very close relative, and um, and it was born. It was born. Mm -hmm. It was. It's the first and I think only species that has been extinct twice. It, it's been declared extinct. It died again because yeah. it died like not too long afterwards. At like, that point, you just gotta say days. you uh, had too many. We chances. tried our best. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna make a crazy <laughs> prediction right now, boys. This is gonna happen mm. ten years. I guarantee it. Okay. You know how we can grow meat now. Yes, like I a, guarantee in a petri you, dish. Yes, in a petri dish. <laughs> I guarantee you, people are going to start growing and producing ancient animal jerky, mammoth jerky, <laughs> oh, the weird. ibex jerky, okay. dino jerky, because it's it'd it. be doable. Like, and you know, every man across America would get their dad that for fucking Father's Day. Like, yeah, it would, they would make velociraptor. It'll be like bison. It'll be like a bison burger kind of. Yes. Situation. Yeah. I, yeah. I could I see that. I could see that with something like mammoth or um, like definitely like, what are some other ones. Bison is a rip off, DNA. I went to this Native of, Native American uh, museum. Very gorgeous. Very beautiful. But then they push you to the the food lobby or whatever. The bison burger was twenty five dollars. Okay, oh, and it no. tasted like a burger. I was like, "This is bullshit." You have to pay for the 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 near extinction of the bison. You have to pay for your ancestors' <laughs> crimes for eradicating. Uh, that was it. Was exactly. Harris, dude? The Italians did nothing. The Italians did nothing wrong, <laughs> dude. Nothing this is wrong. a crazy. As I'm looking at the woolly mammoth, this is crazy. Is like this insanely well preserved. Looks like a baby baby woolly mammoth that would do you know what, what i'm talking about oh here? yeah yeah um her name is like nika or something like that does yeah. she have a name uh, i'm gonna send it in the picture in the in the chat so Zach, you can see this too there's but... a couple baby woolly mammoths those mummies are awesome the I mummy love is like insane and it's the like movie... look up, look no, up no. Mummy, the movie's pretty good <laughs> i've never look seen mammoth them. cube Oh um, my god. Yeah. This look looks like that. me as a kid playing sports, bro. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> not making it. it. And, and if actually, you yeah, you're see, right. It's not the only one. There's a if you want to see something that's really silly, and I, I'm kind of I, I I'm patting myself on the back here because I'm kind of responsible for raising awareness for it. Uh look up What's Mammoth that? Cube. Mammoth Cube. I'm putting a link. 
in this Let's this is like, this. like a, a wikipedia or something what like that. what the hell is this yes what is but this the... <laughs> yo the man what? cube so that is um part of a woolly mammoth that is mummified. I I don't know exactly why it's in a cube. I think it's just because of how it was extracted from the ice, but it looks so silly because it's like tusks. Yeah. What is this page this, though this with Minecraft like block? It's a god <laughs> it of peace is and that. time. And it's oh, don't listen purpose. to that. Somebody's like making a lore, but it, the mammoth cube, um, it's called the J- Jarkov mammoth, I think is the actual specimen's name. It's from the 90s. What are these? Dude, I have stumbled onto these websites, though, where they post real pictures and then just write insane lore. (laughs) The Jarkov (laughs) Mammoth. The Jarkov Mammoth. Yeah, I'm looking at a photo of it right here, which actually it's way uh, when there's a human for scale next to it. It's way larger than I thought it was. It's like it's massive. It's like a giant brick. Harris cloning. Some scientists have expressed hopes, mammoth DNA, blah, blah, blah. And then according to Tikhov, you have to have a living cell for cloning, and not a single living cell can survive in permafrost. Mm, so perhaps this cloning that. idea is not possible. So you can get is... DNA, but yeah, like it, it's very, and, and then you have to get like another thing is like, is that DNA, how degraded is that DNA? How many gaps are in it? Um, because mm. de- DNA is a lot like that's the problem. That's the problem with a lot of the stuff is like you'd have to fill in the gaps, and it's, this is brought up in Jurassic Park. Um, you got to fill in the gaps. Oh, right. Don't they put in like other animal frog shit? DNA. Yeah. They put oh, but frog to be in fair, there and stuff. What we're talking about is not cloning. It's uh, like you were saying with the Ibex. It's it's like induced breeding, which is, is, it's, that, it's that cloning. is slightly different. It is cloning. It's, it's cloning because you got to clone the cell and then implant that cell into um, a surrogate to produce a baby. Um they like, do this with pets, don't they? Because I heard they do. They do. You yeah, yeah. yeah I've heard clone, that. But I've heard people are kind of upset because they go into it thinking it will have the same mind. But the mind is not this. The mind is no, not it's a clone. a new animal. And it it right. won't even be 100% genetically or even look the same. Um, really? In genetics, there's something mm. called epigenetics where you can have the same exact. And it's kind of why um, twins look different because twins will have differences too um I'm where like genetically they start out pretty identical but because of mutations because of how in this epigenetics where just how the dna is read it's not even the dna itself but how your cells read the dna and like interpret it it's very and it has to do with like how the dna has been stretched and coiled and stuff sometimes it's super coiled sometimes it's it's um uh, super not. stretched um, now would yeah, an identical it's, it's, twin have a more similar dna than a non-identical twin Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. would. Um, okay. But it, it's not identical. This is a misconception. Identical twins do not have identical DNA. It's pretty dang close. But as soon as their cells separate inside the womb or inside the mother, mm-hmm. um, they just start becoming different because of mutations. Like as soon their DNA just gets tons of mutations and then it builds up. And then so you can get genetically identical stuff. Like you can get um, like they've cloned cats. They've cloned cats and, and sheep and all kinds of things. And the cat will look different. It will look, yeah, Dolly's like the first one. They'll look different than the original because just of epigenetics um, and mutations and stuff. So like, yeah, when people clone their pets, they expect them to be the same, um, even physically, but even physically, they might not be the same, especially like personality wise. Like that's like, in the environment in the my voice in the oh, environment voice crack, voice crack. i know i'm still i'm a growing boy, <laughs> boy. <laughs> i'm trying to ask uh, smart questions because the last episode these are good questions no I, we I had like 10 these. comments these that were like trey and harris this is so interesting <laughs> who's this funny. asshole who keeps interjecting and trying to be funny and i was like Actually, Fuck, it's fun. funny you mentioned this i think we might have some Patreon questions. Patreon oh, questions. Oh, awesome! Let's see. I'll, I'll try to answer these the best I can. I have like there's, a little. There's a question stuff. on here that I actually feel is a very good question, and I'm curious. I'm curious <laughs> what your answer is. What is the worst cryptid? Worst cryptid. Oh gosh, like like it depends on the um the standards for what 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 you mean by worst. I guess um, what's your least favorite? Do you have one that you're just like, who the fuck came up with this crap? <laughs> least favorite cryptid um after my bigfoot video it might it might be bigfoot because i just read so much bigfoot shit <laughs> like over like, it and Big... just i'm like i'm so tired of bigfoot Sasquatch cause, like, out because because i just i read so much like i think i literally right in front of me i have just a pile like this is underneath under my table i have like a pile of like bigfoot books, oh my god and i i don't know what to do with them like if i should keep them if eBay. i should throw them away eBay. if i should donate them 
Um, Yo, you I okay? Read, I read you, so much. I read bad shit, insane Bigfoot believer. Stuff really? Like he phases through trees. He, <laughs> oh, dude, that sounds he, awesome. This is, this, this is the craziest one I heard. That there's a lady. Um, her book her book is called Forbidden Bigfoot. The titles, the the cover is amazing. I'll have to show you. A picture Sounds like cover. a romance novel. It's it it's the Bigfoot on the title is like a cute little guy, and he's like this, and um, <laughs> and she believes this is something she says that so horses. I worked on a horse farm. Horses will get these things in their manes called wind knots. They're these knots. I remember seeing you get. tweet about this, bro. Mm. And she, and and it, it's. Every human being on earth is like, they're just the wind nodding hair. It, that's it. That's it. There's not some huge mystery. It's just what happens to hair. It gets tangled and forms knots. She believes, and she's got a depiction of this in her book, that if, that Bigfoot's come out of the woods. Oh, and my tie God. It, and tie it. Take the time to, t- like, the horse is totally fine with this, apparently, and tie knots in the Bigfoot's hair. And you're like, what? Are you talking about? Wait till she meets a guy that has dreads, That's dude. Awesome. She's gonna think uh, it's like she, definitive proof of fucking. She's like Bigfoot. <laughs> and so that that was my, the whole research project for that book was like reading that every day, and <laughs> it drove me crazy, dude. So has I mean, your opinion it, changed after all this, though? On Bigfoot, my, I I believe in Bigfoot less after. Really? Okay. Really? All right. Because I because well, I see. I think part of it is I see that um no compelling evidence it, like at best at best um patterson gimmel film gim gimli gim, i said gimli because i mix it up with lord of the rings gimmel um uh, <laughs> that's the famous bigfoot photo where he's like he's yeah like, that one walking around Classic. or she it's a big it's a big breasted bigfoot mm. um she's got jugs she, she got jugs she got jugs and she got trunk that um, thigh jiggle though is that not there is uh, well, it's, it's interesting to me because people always point to that. I remember watching on the Discovery Channel or History Channel like years ago, like a, about that one clip and people being like, I know you might look at this and feel like it's just a man in a costume. But look, you can see the shape of the muscle. And even as a kid, I was like, this really I, looks like a guy in a costume. It doesn't yeah, yeah. look I think like, like that's the thing that we there's we know this about humans. We're really good at convincing ourselves of something, you know. We're, yes. we're really good, especially when we're naive, especially when we want to believe something, which is a lot in the case of Bigfoot believers. Mm-hmm. Um, we're very good at convincing ourselves of seeing something that's not there. Um like you'll you especially and, and and it's it gets like this when you've looked at this video hundreds of times like some of these people were like you are looking at it over and over and over again for any mm-hmm. detail you might have missed any de- and at the end of the day it's a blurry video from the 1960s it's not going to get any better quality it's not you're not going to get any more detailed look at it it's far away people right. often see the cropped pic- picture where it's it's cropped up actually the, if you see the original video it's very far away and has been zoomed in when you zoom into a photo, it loses the quality. You're not going to yep. get. It's not like a TV show where you enhance, you zoom enhance. It's not yeah. like that. You have a photo has limited um, pixels in it, limited whatever you want to say in this case, um, lim- limited quality. Um, so, at, so the thing is, at best, Patterson Gimmel. Let's say Patterson Gimmel is the is really strong evidence. It's great evidence. It's like all we have. It's all mm-hmm. we have for like the past like like um i don't know patterson gimmel 60 Thousands of years now I like, mean, well, like 50 years 50 60 years it's the best we got um but he didn't come up with the like he didn't he bigfoot already existed as a concept by the time that he released uh, that video yeah right, right. yes yeah. technically the whole point of my native american bigfoot video is trying to kind of figure out if there if big if there's evidence that bigfoot as a concept existed um mm. for thousands of years and i'm doubtful of that claim now like i i think Bigfoot as a concept only came about until like the 1940s or 50s. Interesting. Um, at least for like the common idea of Bigfoot, because any story that Bigfooters point to from before then, um, the vast majority of them, if not all of them, they describe Bigfoot very differently where or Sasquatch, like the original story that gave us the word Sasquatch, Sasquatch is described um, very different in it. Sasquatch is um describe it it translates to the big the hairy mountain men but Mm -hmm. but in the story i think hairy is supposed to mean and other people have backed me up on this where they just had long shaggy hair like head hair like they were in their 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 wild people they're wild native americans that live in the mountains and they're kind of like barbarians kind of like um Hunt, like living in hunter gatherers and other native americans encountered them um because in the story they use fire 
they speak Native American languages. They speak the Douglas tongue, which is a which is a tribe's language. Um, and they um, use fire. They use tools. They um, like live in houses, live in artificially constructed homes. Um, so, and this is the case with pretty much every story before the 1940s or 50s or whatever, um, where they're not described like our modern idea of Bigfoot, where it's an ape man that lives in the wild. It's they're they're wild people. They're like human beings that are feral. Seems kind of a thing. lot more so like ne- to almost believe. like Neanderthals. It sounds like yeah yeah. You, they would have a stronger case to say that these people are like like just a different know, race like humans like humans yeah like human <laughs> beings not like um like like ape men like upright walking hair totally shaggy hairy don't use tools don't speak english um that kind of stuff yeah do, do you know what this makes me think of which it, it's somewhat off topic but i feel like this is exactly like just, this was bothering me earlier this week i almost was going to tweet something about it it's actually like a huge annoying etymology problem that i have which is that did you guys know this maybe i brought this up the last time that you were on the word orangutan okay oh yeah yeah the old man of the forest it literally means it's 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 a direct translation meaning orang meaning person and hutang meaning forest which i just want to say it drives me up the fucking wall because (laughs) my entire life I just assumed that they were called orangutans, O R A N G, because they're the orange monkey. They're, they're like an <laughs> orange ape. And Tang, because they named them after the drink, right? Right. The the fact fact that, that's so the funny that you're that right that it's just a coincidence that the words are It's just a coincidence. Like, but it's like, weird. what are the odds? Like when I learned that that was the actual etymology behind the name, I was like, bullshit bullshit <laughs> how is it that the only why why would it be that and not gorillas like if you told me that i'd be like oh that's kind of interesting but like it's the orange great ape and it has the word orange in its name but it's just a complete coincidence it pisses it's me like, off <laughs> it's like doofenshmirtz when he says uh rust he says he's like rust is it is it red is it because it's red dust and then he, he checks the dictionary and, and gets it wrong or something like that oh like, well oh, i've never i'm not even a coinc- with that. there's a there's a scene in, in phineas and ferb where doofenshmirtz he's like why do they call it rust is it because it's <laughs> red dust is that the name i gotta check the etymology of it i think the joke is that he says it slightly wrong and he finds a book on like bugs because etymology and Oh, what, how do you say the other one? Like etymology is oh, like similar, yes. like the study of words and the study of bugs. The words sound similar. Anyways, anyways, it's a joke. But the thing is, I looked it up because I was like, oh, that's a good question. And and it, it is a total coincidence. Red, rust is not red dust. It has like a whole old English Latin uh, fuck, etymology man? that's known. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's words like that. Yeah, I, I think and I think that's kind of fun that like orangutan is the is the is the forest man like the guy it is the forest, forest man it has nothing to do with them being orange <laughs> they just happen to be orange monkeys uh, apes, but, um, yeah because there's stories like that with chimp like it's funny that like so i thought this was kind of funny like human so europeans europeans there's no monkeys in europe except in spain i think on the very very tip of spain and there's mm-hmm. no apes so in europe you're making so, a racial joke <laughs> no 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 like no <laughs> yeah, actual okay, like okay. like human human beings are the only primates in in europe mm-hmm. um except in zoos so like so like our european history grew up totally not knowing really what an ape or a monkey was they heard stories the greeks the greeks had some romans had some um but in the middle ages uh there were really no monkeys in europe they only heard rumors and stuff and Crazy. that's where you get like stories of like dog-headed men um, from like travelers where they were seeing probably baboons and they're like oh those are dog-headed oh, what? men yeah um, can you imagine so, never seeing funny. a monkey and then seeing what is essentially just a little guy <laughs> yeah 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 around. Like, I, I, that, like that's why you bring, that? yeah. bring it up that's why you bring it up because when charles darwin proposed his theory and stuff that like humans descend from apes um a lot of like people are like that's silly that's silly whatever and stuff but like 
um you look at native stories from like africa and stuff like folklore and they're like 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 chimpanzees and humans are brothers we're we're relatives we're brothers yeah. and it's like yeah yeah if you grew up seeing a chimpanzee you'd be like that looks a lot like a human being we probably are re- closely related are to close, each other. Probably. yeah um so it's kind of funny like how that goes about we're like yeah like the story of like they call orangutan like forest man because they're like human beings but like in the forest like they're like us they're like us so i think it's yeah. funny when people like deny I don't know, like evolution. They're like that, that. Humans are not apes. Humans are not apes. We're not. We. It's just coincidence that we look like them, kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, no, it's no, like, like, dude, just if look you've at seen them. them like, yeah. if you see like like a like a, a chimpanzee hand or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like, it looks so much. Like, how could you ever think that we don't? We're not related to something. Or like at least that. So we had a common behavior. ancestor. Or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Th- to deny... like that we're brothers. I love yeah. that Futurama bit where they're like. <laughs> okay well where's the missing link and he's like oh well it's here and it's like okay well where's the missing link in between that and there and he's like well it's here and it keeps going and there's like they've just found so many of them but uh it's crazy yeah (laughs) i mean i love that i I think in general like the when we were at the zoo recently and like I, i always have felt this way but it's like african animals in particular australia has some properly insane animals but africa just like giraffes rhinoceros elephant like these are things that like if you had if you were let's say in like living in europe during a time you know that like in the middle ages or something and someone had traveled and saw this thing and brought you back a drawing and they were like i just saw this in real life you would be like bullshit like no (laughs) shot you saw that in real life like a giraffe is like the most insane looking animal well it does sound like an idiot's oc of like I drew a horse, but I gave it a long neck. Yeah, like you wouldn't be like, bro, shut up. It's got up. leopard like, shut up. It's got yeah, leopard it's spots. spots that don't it, look like any other. And they animal. fight with their head. Like, dude, what Crazy. you're bullshitting me? Do right you know now. that? Did you know that? Um, uh, giraffes are in the Bible. Giraffes are in the Bible. What really because are, the ark, right or no? In Noah's ark. No, like they're explicitly mentioned in the Bible. Like the the ancient Hebrews had a name for giraffe, um, like a word for giraffe. But they um, also had a name for kosher. Leviathan. You can eat it. They did have a word for Leviathan. Harris. Do you want to know what the the name for giraffe is um, in the in the Bible? It is camel lepopartalus, which it means cam, camel um, leopard because of the, the huh. spots. Oh, really? That's, That's interesting. interesting. Are they are yeah, they so kosher? Really? They are kosher, kosher because kosher? of their hooves. Is their the hooves. split? And they're oh, explicitly wow. they're explicitly stated to be kosher. I think they're one of the few animals that are stated to be kosher. I wonder if there's some sort of meal background, like with Catholics, how beavers and muskrats are considered fish because they oh yeah you're supposed to the give capybara. up meat. Yeah, so they're like, <laughs> yeah, those are fish. Yeah, you can eat those. Dude, wow, that's why yeah. I like this is this is a bit of a tangent, but I get so mad when people act like there's no magic in the world or. I mean, to to say, like, fairies exist or something, but, like, going back to the orangutan thing, it's, like, imagine witnessing one in the wild. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. it, it, it is, like, a hell. forest spirit. It really oh, is, yeah. like, a f- and wise... They, and the, they have those at the zoo also, and every time that I'm at the orangutan exhibit, it's hard to not... I don't know if it's just a me thing or it's a human innate thing, but, like, when you see, like, a, a great ape, like, in particular orangutans, because they are very active, and, like, th- it, there's one that's carrying her, like, blankie around and, like, has it wrapped <laughs> around her or will just be doing crazy... running around, and, like, they're so... It's so... you. It, it makes me overcome with emotion sometimes. I'm like, we are so like this You gotta animal. read this play, bro, because it, it you literally even made a comic that was almost a reference to it, and I don't even think you've read it, but it's about a... I, I think an Italian guy who's like a steam worker shoveling coal, and he just mm-hmm. can't fit in in life, but he always goes to the zoo and sees the apes, and then it the play essentially ends with him just breaking into the enclosure and hugging just them becoming and just be, like joining them and, and like because he feels at home with these creatures it's so beautiful and like i think he dies at the end not from the apes but just like his heart or something but you'd love it it is you'd beautiful it. that sounds like a re- what's the name of the play i gotta what's look it up name? i gotta look it up let me look that's a really look i up. like that Italian man becomes monkey. Wait, <laughs> becomes, let's returns to monkey. <laughs> returns right. to monkey. And and the thing is, is that like there's a great book. It's called Mama's Last Hug. It's written by a, a pretty mm-hmm. respected um, primatologist guy that studies bonobos, and um, it talk. It, it blew my mind. It's all about animal emotions, and um, hmm. 
how animals are so much like us. It's in, in their emotional animal, like animals that you typically don't even consider like emotional um, are like, like they care about their loved ones and stuff like that. Like elephants and have like culture, like elephants will yeah. go to bone yards. They'll go to bone yards where they find elephant skulls and bones and they'll like caress them and like touch them and stuff in a way Crazy. that's unique. And we can't ask them what they think of it. Like, what do you, what do you interpret this right. as? Do you know that these are your ancestors or your relatives? They, and we can't do that, but it, it's so fascinating. I love that stuff. And also, also, um, I think his name is Franz De Waal. He's great. Um, he talks about animal sexuality a lot. He's, he's big into to that because he studies bonobos. Mm-hmm. Bonobos, bonobos are interesting where like the entire species is like bisexual like it is a entire species that is based bonobo based based bonobo yo i do have to make a correction first off this is a famous play by famous playwright eugene o'neill so i should have known Mm. that it's called the hairy ape i i misinterpreted the ending yank visits the zoo sympathizes with the gorilla releases him and introduces himself as if they are friends the gorilla fatally crushes his ribs and throws oh him into God. the cage where he dies. So I think I got the exact opposite point I was no, trying I, to make. Is, but I think there's something still beautiful about that story. It is beautiful. It, 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 it explores crushes masculinity. His ribs. Crushes, crushes his, his ribs. ribs. Jeez, that's rough. There, dude, I remember watching... Um, I remember what... Because we're talking about elephants also and just their behavior that... I remember watching a, a Mythbusters episode, which, first of all, I was also just thinking about yesterday. What a based fucking show. I cannot believe that I grew <laughs> I like up watching Mythbusters. Mythbusters. What a blessing. Yeah. Amazing show. But anyway, that, that I remember watching one episode where they, one of them that they were doing, because, you know, they have like, they would have like Carrie, Tori and Grant, God rest his soul, would all be doing some something that was like engineering based. Like they would be doing something kind of kooky. And then you would have... uh Jamie and Adam would be doing something that was kind of more like on a grand scale, but usually a bit more fantastical. Like that would be kind of like the dichotomy of the episode. And I remember that the, the one that Adam and Jamie were doing was it was an episode where they were trying to test the myth. If elephants were actually afraid of mice, because that was like an ongoing thing. And they're, and they ended up like, they, they ended up making this rig because they wanted to make sure that, whatever they did to reveal the mouse wasn't going to be the thing that scared the elephant but that the mouse itself was the subject of you know of its attention and they ended up walking away from it like like elephants are afraid of mice they, and they and proved I, and it right right they proved yeah. that it was not a myth that it was actually and they did true like this, they, they like test in like that's what i loved about it where like they went out of their way to test the hypothesis like really test it right to test rule it. out and, all and the try to rule everything out and I remember <laughs> I they, they awesome. had like a little they had like a little interview, a talking head with Adam, like at the end of the episode, where he's sitting there like in the car and he's like, I gotta tell you, behind the scenes, guys, like there are some episodes or some myths that we're assigned that are so kooky that by the when we're going on the day that we're waking up to go film it, I know it's fake, but we're just gonna go do it for fun. And like this was one of those like the fact that we actually like found evidence that this might be true is insane and i was like that is crazy but elephants are just like they're really intelligent they're i've heard that they're thing about their skeletons before they're super smart yeah. It's, uh, I'm trying very hard to hear what you're saying, but Trey took off his shirt and it was just like... Oh, so I'm just yeah, I was getting that, hot. That, that, was like the, that was like the video that you posted that was to, to Forrest, but it's like your eyebrows look so good in that I video. did that edit you made with the guy <laughs> with the Trey <laughs> eyebrows just, was fucking I, killing me. The reason oh. they look good is I just threaded them to, like, yesterday. I went to the, oh. the salon. You thread them yourself? No, I go to a lady. A lady. Oh yeah, um, dude, I used to do that in uh, Saudi. That's not. It's hard to find a threader here. There's a story. There was one of the guys on campus who uh, wanted to get his beard shaved, but asked for it incorrectly. They threaded his whole beard, and he said he was too embarrassed to say that's not what I meant. He said he was (laughs) just sitting there crying, dude. Can you imagine? Because he he had like a he's like me. He had like beard everywhere. Like yeah, that's a lot of hair. Because I cry with just like the eyebrows, and that's like I have to like stomach it. It's like oh my god, it hurts that bad, really? Yeah, it hurts. Dude, threading hurts like shit. Really, it hurts. Yeah, fuck that, dude. It's worth it. Because because I get really thick eyebrows. I get really thick eyebrows if I don't if I don't thread them. 
yeah, yeah. And this then so I can, so I can look at four spots. It's crazy. Like, like, dude, you, eyebrows. your eyebrows are like the <laughs> fucking Persian god in 300, dude. Like, yeah, no, no, my, my unibrow is get, coming in pretty strong. Right now. Yeah, I got mine like coming Xerxes, in. Like and like Xerxes. Xerxes. Yes, Xerxes, Xerxes. Dude. Uh, dude, that movie would have been, so... if they do a sequel, you should 100% be the new Xerxes guy, dog. I would love, I would love, I kind of, like, 300 is kind of my guilty pleasure. It's a kind of, like, yes. it's, it's so it's good, a, like, dude. Fuck like anyone who talks shit on it, bro. Because, well, like, uh, it, it yeah. gives you, like, a totally inaccurate view of, like, the Battle of Thermopylae, and, like, it's kind of, like, big, like, kind of, like, racist to Persians, like, literally makes them, like, goblin orc monsters. But, but like, it's also, it's not, I yes. can't help but love it. People no, want to blame also, Snyder yeah. though, but it was based on a comic book. Yeah, yeah by yeah, yeah. Frank Miller. Right, it's a Frank right, Miller yeah. comic. And and actually, and there's like was... in like the story, the story has like the level where it's like the story is being told from the perspective of like Greeks who who were big, like who did actually treat the Persians that way. Like if you read, I read Herodotus, which is mm-hmm. like the the first historian. He's a Greek, ancient Greek guy. He like literally gave us the word history, and um, his book is so long. It took me like two years to finish it. And um, he talks about the Persians, and it's like that. It's literally like like three hundred, where it's like they have goblin. <laughs> they have like there's a race of people that's that that only feed on the wind and sleep for six months out of the year, <laughs> and and men that have ostrich legs and and mohawks of feathers and 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 like men that have eyes on their stomach and stuff like that. So the Greeks were like this. The Greeks were like this. I don't know. That's why I kind of love 300. <laughs> Is there any yeah. historical explanation for like in my head it would be a bear maybe or something to that extent but like you know they there was one point where it's like all the bad guys are human to extent but then they're like bring in the the big guys and they bring in these like <laughs> monsters with like swords for hands and shit. Is that just? <laughs> is that just like? That's bullshit? like three hundred. That's that it's is three hundred. Yes. Executor who's like. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it what? It, but I I swear you see creatures like that in history, but they must just be animals, right? Um. Yeah. Like I've heard this a lot because like people say this about like the Minotaur. Like where did the Minotaur right I, yes, come from? Yes. Where where do Cyclopses come from? And um. We'll never know. We'll never know. Like, I think a level of it is people can just make up stories. Like, people, like, ancient people, they're bored as hell. They got nothing to do all day long. So, like, I don't know. They're like, imagine if, like, a guy had one eye. That'd be cool. <laughs> like, you know, like, like that probably just happened. Like, you know, like, that's an easy explanation. But there's also another thing where, like, people say that, like, I know scientists have said, like, well, in Greece, there's, like, a flower that women would take um, when they're pregnant. And if they're pregnant, it would cause, like, birth defects, such as, like, um and maybe that's like the source of these stories or um this is a big deal is like um elephant skulls if you see an elephant skull the trunk is like a massive little hole in the center and people like maybe people saw the skeletons of elephants and interpreted it as just a giant eye in the middle um and we can never test because the thing is the ancient greeks are gone we can never like ask them where they got their stories from um but that's a possibility like who knows i gotta re i gotta reiterate that because harris would love it but harris what if the the concept of cyclops came from a guy seeing an elephant skull because you know how their their Mm. nose is just a big hole i could see that That'd be this crazy. is a very popular theory um because let me let me show you a, a, a photo of an elephant skull what were you um, i think it was something about this but what were you fighting with fucking retard right-wing twitter about over some uh gargoyle or something gargoyle. It, it, or no it was that there was a, a an elephant oh, or something yeah, but they that. said it was actually a bird it was on some statue you know an what i'm talking elephant. about a bird oh yes 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 this is um this was a mayan or zolpata like i think it was a let's just say a central american culture and um the and so it, there's a relief and this happens every now and there's reliefs because they have these artwork and people have looked at these um mayan or um Zol- zolpatec like um native american cultures in central america that have artwork in their temples or in their buildings and um they circle it they circle it and go like that looks like an elephant Hmm. that's an elephant therefore elephants existed in mexico um before europeans arrived um even though we don't have any evidence to really back that up but this artwork proves it and um i know people who are archaeologists i know people who do do this for a living 
And I asked for their opinion on it. And they're like, well, it's stylized artwork. Like their artworks in this, in an art style, like things don't look realistic. Um, and it could be a macaw because he showed me what a macaw looks like in their art style. Like, like, and it, in the, the, it turned the beak into like almost like a trunk. It looks a yeah. little like a trunk in a very simplified art style. Um, and I offer that up as an explanation. And that's a more likely explanation that this is just a stylized macaw. Um, why not? That, that seems reasonable. Mm -hmm. Um, and they get upset. They get pissed off. They're like, you're just, how can you tell me that's a, that's an, that's an elephant. It doesn't look like, how can you tell me that's not an elephant? That doesn't look like a macaw, you dumbass. Like, like they say stuff like that. And all I'm saying is like, well, it's just more likely we don't, we have no evidence to show that elephants yeah. are in Mexico. Like we, we have, we have, um, ancient people, like the ancient people wrote this stuff down. Like the Mayan language is translated. We know mm -hmm. we have their writings. And not once do they mention elephants, even though that would have been useful in war. You'd or, yeah, you'd think that you'd they mention, would have mentioned yeah, it at they, least once. Yeah. Um, well, so I said the guy like was posting about... pictures of you like, oh, yeah, I'm going to believe this guy. And I was like looking at the pictures. like, And I was like, yeah, I believe anything. That anything he says, says I believe that. it. Yeah. <laughs> they always do that. There was another guy who was talking about um, the uh, – the um, there's a famous – people always bring this up. We were talking about uh, 300 and Spartans. People are like, the Spartans are badasses. They're awesome. And um, Alexander the Great's dad um, sent them a letter like, hey, I'm going to invade your country if you uh, don't surrender to me. And they're like, and the reply was like, if it was one letter word, if, if you invade your <laughs> country, if you conquer us. And people are like, badass Spartans, yo, they're so cool. And if, and I'm like, and I just went like, yeah, if you look at the rest of the story, they got their ass beat and they lost. <laughs> they lost. You're leaving That's out a, the story. They, but I that is, ball, bro, that is so baller just responding with if. If that is so badass. It's a cool line. It's also funny to imagine that they're like illiterate. So they're trying, they're thinking like, okay, tell, <laughs> tell them this. Like, if you come to our city, like, we're, we're gonna do this, but they just write if and then they're like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, dude, bro, I don't know, like, and that's it's a cool story and in itself, but tell the whole story, tell the whole story because yeah, there's right, dude bros right. who idolize the Spartans, um, yeah. and have some pretty kind of like, I don't know, not great opinions based on the Spartans, where they're like, I don't know, they're like super race, super race, we not we have to eat protein shakes and and uh send children out into the woods to fight wolves and stuff like that i don't know and it's like the spartans were cool but they weren't like immortal they got beat tons of times and, and they got their country their 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 kingdom got conquered like it, but dude the coolness in, comes down to like we think they're cool. they're cool but it's like we demonize michael jackson's dad and it's like they were just bad parents they would like if your kid was ugly, they'd throw it in a fucking pond and then like didn't weren't yeah. you bathed in wine from a child to toughen your skin? I, I don't um, know if that's a myth, but I don't know. I see the thing is with uh, the the problem with the Spartans too is most of what we know about the Spartans is what the the, the Athenians like people of Athens said about the Spartans. The Spartans very rarely wrote stuff up stuff down about themselves, so like it's their word. And, and who knows, they were their enemies, like the Athenians yeah. and the Spartans were enemies at the time this stuff's being written down. So who knows how much of it is even, it's called the Spartan Mirage or something like that. It's got a name mm. in historian lingo where it's like a mirage, like we don't know what they actually believed because they weren't actually writing down their own stuff. Um, or their stuff, the stuff that they did write, write down didn't survive. So we have only like their enemies opinion of them and stuff. So it's hard to say. Where and does the, the account of them having sex with each other, was that what the Athenians said? I'm not. Um, I'm not even making a joke. Didn't they? Weren't they encouraged to have sex with the sold like soldier on soldier to like you this defend is, yeah, this better? Is, this was a this is a common concept in um ancient the classical Greece. Um, the, it was more a bigger deal with the city of Thebes. There's the sacred band of Thebes, um, which was a military um order. It was like an army made entirely up of I think 300 pair pairs of male lovers. They were men that were um partnered up. They were partnered up. And they were lovers to each other and they fought on they fought together um and the idea was that like if you're fighting next to your lover you will have more strength like you will have more strength you'll fight to the end because you don't want to humiliate yourself you're fighting for the one that you love right next to you um mm -hmm. that was the idea and the in the sacred band of thebes was was um very successful they beat the spartans at a battle called leuctra um wow and they were only beat they were only uh defeated by uh philip ii alexander the great's dad in um 
Karinea, I think is that battle's name, and they were wiped out to a man. The whole entire regiment was killed off, and the Sacred Band of Thieves was no more because they fought to the last man. Damn. Whoa. And that's so, like the real and, and, 300. It is, yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Maybe it's, yeah, it's, I think it's 300. Sacred Band of Thieves is 300. Um, and so, um, and to this day, there's a, there's a statue, there's a lion statue that was erected over their, their graves, and you can still see it. It's been reconstructed, wow. but it, it still exists. Um, Memorial it's just a lion and... having sex with another lion from behind. <laughs> I mean, they should have. They should have. <laughs> it is kind of amazing that these, like, that the stories survive from these you know wiped out groups of people you know what i mean like uh, that's uh what, what was the name of it? band of thieves sacred, yeah, band, sacred of thieves. band of thieves yeah there yeah, were several military orders like it and and um people say this about achilles and patroclus like in like the the iliad like they were lovers and they fought like this is a very common concept in ancient greece for like warrior lovers is like a big deal like like mm. and it's idolized it's idolized to become a, a warrior lover kind of situation um yeah 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 Crazy. and it was a yeah it's interesting there's i could talk i could talk a long time about it yeah i mean it, it, it's it's interesting that all of that kind of gets uh kind of whitewashed like you don't learn about it. we actually had a class when straight i was in middle washed, school like yeah. one of my straight washed <laughs> There was a, uh, yeah, it says right here, Sa Sacred Band of Thebes, troop of select soldiers, according to some ancient Greek claims, 150 pairs of male lovers. my bad, yeah. Well, no, it's 150 yeah. pairs, so it was 300. Oh, do you okay. think they were banging okay. before they entered, or do you of think, male did you get paired up when you joined? Were these guys actually gay, I'm thinking, too? It, see, the thing is, is that um, the idea of being gay was the idea of gay, being gay or straight wasn't a concept in the ancient world. Like it was just assumed that you would um, have sex or have relationships with both sexes. Like it wasn't even a question. Like you, you might prefer one sex over the other, but throughout your lifetime, it was just kind of expected. Like yeah, you sleep with guys, you sleep with women. It's uh, this is just our way of life. And um, you have a wife, you have a wife, but like marriage is political. Marriage is mainly to keep money in like uh, political arrangements and families and stuff like that and it was typically expected that a, a, a man would have a mistress or a lover or something like that as, apart from his wife they could love each other they could they could be a very happy marriage but it wasn't expected um mm -hmm. so yeah so like when we talk about like historical figures especially ancient ones like um people get all up in arms like i know recently like alexander the great like people like alexander the great was not gay like he was oh yeah i saw you straight. arguing with about yeah. that shit yeah. i i argue every single time it comes up and and the thing is is the historical accounts like explicitly state no he had he had a male lover we know his name it was a very public event they made out like we know this and and it's not yeah. and the thing is it's not abnormal that's not an abnormal concept that's not a thing for yeah. him to be ashamed of in his ancient time is that like you had a wife but you could also have male lovers if you wanted to like it this is how it I works. think so a like, lot of these guys who deny this historical stuff are struggling with something because I don't know if you guys get to bring joy from this, but it sparks so much joy in me when like a hot chick will be posted on Twitter and there's like 17 far right accounts that are like, God, I wish that was a 12 year old Greek boy. Oh, Yo, man. I bet 12 year old Greek boys look just like. Have you guys seen this? It's fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Every yeah. time. dude, And it's like, bro. Get a job. Yeah. What anything. are you doing, dude? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can a girl bizarre. not be hot without you wishing she was 12 and also well, a boy? Yeah. Like, I don't understand. Well, when, and, when, and, when historically did it become, was it the spread of like Roman Catholicism that made that like no, no bueno anymore? Or like, why did it's that go away? It's still even a relatively modern concept to be like, to base like, so in the Middle Ages, so in ancient Greece and Rome, the idea was that you can have sex with whoever, um, they didn't really care about age that much, so things are problematic. But it, it, both for mm. both men and women. Um, but they all what mattered to them was like if you're a top or a bottom. This was this was a, a deal. Really? For them. This um, still like people, continues to this day, bro. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, yeah. A little bit continues. <laughs> where like a man was expected, a respected man, especially like a nobleman and stuff, um, was expected to take the the dominant top role. Like you were expected to be a top, and if you're a bottom you should be ashamed <laughs> and, and wow. this was the True. way for True. No, this the, <laughs> and this was the way for both men and women like um like they're like it was slanderous to be like um 
pegging like a top the romans woman? did oh the, the romans did mm. pegging they did pegging but it was seen as like shameful and like the it would accuse people of being the passive role and stuff like that so so like julius caesar julius caesar um was accused of being um the king of bithynia like a, a neighboring kingdom's um passive partner and that was that was shameful for him apparently. wow this is a rumor that that julius caesar was this is a quote from i think cicero um he said he said that caesar is every man's woman and every woman's man he he slept around he took he, he was wow he was a bottom and he was a top and he he, he was scandal and this was a scandalous a true thing. verse um seriously and, it was, and so like the idea was that like being a bottom is bad but being a top is good being a top is like oh that's good we don't care um and then and then so what happened was is when christianity took over um there was this concept of um, of course, the Bible is anti-homosexuality and like Leviticus and stuff like lying with man. That's been wrong. But in the Middle Ages, there was this concept that any sex that was not procreative is bad and it's bad regardless. Like any like you, if you have sex with like two men and woman, that's, of course, expected. But if a man and woman, if a woman gives a guy like a BJ or something, or if the guy does like anal or something like that, like that is just as sinful as a guy having sex with a man. Because it's not procreative. Mm. It doesn't create a human being. Um, That's this so is the idea in the Middle Ages. The, well, there's Stupid. this concept of like anti anything that made you feel good would make you like a hedonist. I mean, yeah. and it was still continued in Christianity, which is why we have things like uh, uh, like cornflakes. Weren't those made as like an anti masturbatory? Anti masturbation. Yeah. 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 And it's what? like. Is yeah. Because the thought yeah, was yeah, you'd eat like them and they were bad. so boring that you wouldn't jack off, which is crazy. <laughs> Which is insane, but well, because people thought people thought all kinds of things. Like people thought all kinds of things. If you were like, if you were a sexual deviant, which is the idea, if you masturbated, or if you were gay, or if you like to take different positions in sex, like there was something mentally like wrong with you, and it was like you were like mentally challenged, kind of basically. Like, and that's it's funny when you read like historians from like the 1930s writing about ancient Greeks. And they're like, Alexander the Great, because I, I read a book from the 1930s about Alexander the Great. And the historian was like, Alexander the Great can't be gay because he knew how to use a sword. Like, that's basically what he said. He's like, he was a masculine man. He he knew how to do sports. He, he, he was a masculine man. He couldn't have been gay. And it's like, that was like, to them, that was like the concept. Like, a gay person has these built-in things they have to be. They have to be effeminate and weak and like afraid of blood and, and bullshit stuff like that and this existed with it like until like the the 60s or, or until when people kind of woke up people still kind of believe this which is um, insane though because hmm. personally and i don't know if you guys <laughs> know this the same way but the most masculine men archetypes i can think of are gay men gay men who are <laughs> like like there's gay guys yeah and they you know so there's gay guys like that but like uh <laughs> There is an archetype of gay guy who is like you've seen him before, super like buff, fucking like yeah, just yes, would, super built. like an ape, like would, could like kill, kill you, someone. Dude. Like yes. that is definitely an archetype of gay guy, which is crazy that it, we like pretend that it's not or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was the idea. The idea was you couldn't be masculine and gay at the same time. It's silly. It's so silly. We have had us, such was... a fantastic discussion. You have to come back on again. This has been wonderful, dude. Yeah. I, know, I know we're talking about this talking stuff. about so much stuff. The yeah. second time is always better. I feel like because the first time it's like everyone's kind of like sh not shy, but like we don't really know each other, and we're like, mm. you know, well, what I we mean? All, we also got to go into this episode with some tea. You know what I mean? Like all this stuff going on. With, <laughs> I'm like, so I, curious to see how this I'm, ends, bro. I want to hear his response. I want to hear Forrest. Like I want him to respond. He hasn't responded to me. He said he would get back to me at some point but um i i'm if i have a feeling he's just gonna ignore me you know what we should do yo fish. yeah i don't know we raise 10k we fly to papua new guinea find it find ourselves. this bitch ourself dude <laughs> ourselves. yeah that would be I, fucking baller i see the thing is i have details like i have a certain amount of details like he mentions that rose in the story a woman rose took the photo and I think I'm pretty, I'm like 99% sure I found her, her, um, her email. And I think I found who she is. You are Mr. Name. Email, dude. dude you are dude. Mr. And, email. And, I, and I've talked email. to people, I've talked to her, two of her uh, colleagues who've worked with her in the field. Um, and they're like, we haven't heard this story. And they're like, I, I'd be happy to pass this information along to her. 
um mm. so there we go so we'll, we'll see we'll see but who knows so she's a hard to reach person i tried contacting her on facebook and stuff and the thing is is i don't know for a certainty that this is the same woman this woman her name is rose she's from papua new guinea she graduated papua new guinea university she works with like uh papua new guinea singing dogs which is these are all details he gave in the story unless mm-hmm. there's like two roses two women named rose who fit that description I, I guess you know what if it's yeah. not her and she's I, like well i was gonna what say is a thylacine i was gonna say i, I feel like you're, it's gonna be forest in a wig like who's running <laughs> this like email like I, I almost feel like this like rose character i'm getting like did you ever watch the movie catfish like did you ever actually yes, like where it's like yes you're like i kind of feel like this is like that in itself feels catfishy like rose <laughs> like I, and, and also what kind of name is uh, what i mean I don't know. I don't want to pass judgment. What do I know? But like the name Rose doesn't sound That's like my the mom's name of name, somebody so from No, but I mean it doesn't sound, like, doesn't sound like the name of somebody who lives in Papua New Guinea. I'd expect them to have there, They have a lot of Roman Catholics. There's, 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 there's Roman Catholics. Catholics. Roman Catholics. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, Harris. The, 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 the woman the woman that I found <laughs> is a Papua New Guinea woman, native okay. woman, who has the name Rose. Her last name is a, like a, a more like Papua New Guinea name. Um mm-hmm. Um, but I'm waiting. I was like, Forrest, contact me to confirm that this is the same woman you're talking about. Because the thing is, is he has he's so secretive about this. There's no way to fact check him because people can I, just keep on giving him the benefit of the doubt. You know, like, oh, maybe this is a different Rose. If I, if she gets back to me, maybe this is a different different woman. Yeah. You know, I, he I hasn't given the last like, name. I think there's going <laughs> to I'm almost predicting this like crazy development where Rose contacts you and is basically like forest is threatening me i we cannot be <laughs> having a conversation like oh my I god i feel like there's gonna be i feel like you're about to open up a can of worms like, it you turns know, into like I a might. da vinci code-esque like fucking crazy i, I really would i really would advise you trey i mean from from a content but also from a documentation point of view if you are not already actively documenting in video like what you, like the step-by-step because I think this is I think your process of doing this, first of all, is unique because I don't know any other person in like the current internet age who is having well, like I, I think actually this is a really interesting and important scientific like moment, even if the mm-hmm. thylacine is not discovered and it's turns out to be a bunch of baloney, I think you would be doing your due diligence by documenting your expose of the case because that in itself is an important yeah. scientific yeah. development. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to hold him accountable, you know? Like, I'm not... Like, the thing is, I'm not... I don't think I'm asking for much, you know? I'm not, like, being yeah. unrealistic here. I'm like, let's just see the photo. Why not? Yeah, Why not? Like, and you're not being a dick either, which is... Yeah. I know, no. Poor, you're, be, you're being very unbiased. He, he thinks I'm being a dick. He said I was vicious to him, but I, I was. No, like, he was, was, he was a sassy little guy. He's a little sassy dog. He, he, he was being sassy it, in his response. In, in my opinion, that. he's a very he he knows how to talk. He he talks almost like um like a lawyer. Um, yes, he can yes. say he can yes. say he can talk a lot without saying much. Mm. Um, because he sent me like three different messages, um, and. In the messages, I, he gave me nothing. He gave me absolutely nothing. He said, "This is unnamed institution owns the photo. I can't show you the photo. Uh, that's it." Like, <laughs> like he didn't answer my questions. Interesting. Um, so uh, interesting. he's very, at the very least, he's being very evasive. And I'm taking screenshots of all his tweets here. I'm doing it right now just to make sure. I would screenshot um, those DMs as well, like just to make he, sure that you have all that, because he could get rid of those if he. He, he has not DM'd stuff. me. Is the thing. He is not. Oh, oh it's all just yeah, he responded all, on, oh, yeah. public. It's tweets, all public. Yeah, yeah. He, it, I, it, I told it. him he's free to DM me, but he is not DM me. All this information is just him. Like so far, the, his only response has been those three or two uh, Twitter messages uh, that are pretty dang short. But yeah, I'm documenting everything. I'm I'm doc- I have emails from a whole bunch of people. Um, Rose's a, a, a colleagues. I think I'm thinking because I've seen it before. That's the thing. That's my reason for why I'm doing this because I've seen it before. Mm-hmm. Um, where it turns out to be a scam, you know, like where I don't, I have a thing where I don't trust people's word. Is the thing like I don't. No, trust it's a good thing. Where yeah. if you're saying somebody says something, I want to see the the firsthand account. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't want to take your right. word for it. This is why I don't like him quoting this rose and not giving me any information on her last name what her qualifications are who she is he's like there's this lady 
and I'm and because he does this he did this elsewhere in the video too where it's just like a friend of mine a guy a guy mm-hmm. a person who does hiking and that's none of that is falsifiable like I don't know who knows who knows you didn't give us a name you, for all of you know you just made up this person um, yeah and it bothers me it just bothers me because I'm a I'm a, I consider myself a scientist I consider someone yeah. who cares about science um and journalism I think I'm a, a bit of a journalist too like where I do reporting on this stuff and I think this is I think this is bad it is bad bad, and I, I think, bad science I, I think the, <laughs> I think the problem is also and is the bigger picture which is unfortunate that this is where we're at but you know if Forrest is doing a kind of scam and if he's if it's true what these other people have mentioned that he's kind of a parachute scientist and he's taking credit for other smaller less famous scientists work you know and feeding his own celebrity that's detracting from the truth which is you know the science is you're trying to find you're trying to find answers and like him right. he clouds it in the community if he's not being forth oh, forthcoming oh, and also yeah. if he's being deceptive yeah yeah like i because i told you i contacted the i'm talking to the guy who took that video of the of the the pheasant the pigeon mm-hmm. um huge discovery massive success story great great scientist and he has to like eke out a living for his his funding his funding is Forty thousand dollars. He might be, and 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 for these for these very selective uh, trips, mm-hmm. and Forrest Gallant is asking for a hundred times that yes. something crazy like that, and, yeah. and, and expect and and it, it pisses me off because there's real scientists struggling to get funding for expeditions, and they're successful. They they've done good work. That's good work. Mm-hmm. And Forrest Gallant takes the attention away, takes the attention away, and won't even show us. The photo won't even show us the, photo. the reason to fund him. The whole reason he thinks the thylacine's there. It's just like it, it, the the contrast between re- how a real scientist acts and how Forrest Gallant is acting. It bothers me. It bothers me. Interesting. And I think it, it messes with the credibility of science in general. It it, it hurts us all. It hurts us all. As I'm, I gotta That's say, powerful. I'm like fascinated <laughs> by this like ongoing thing. I'm I'm really curious how this plays out over because it. Yeah. I, my guess is that he'll he'll never dm you he'll, yeah, he's already he's gonna he's gonna avoid you so it, everything that you hear is gonna be through well he sees other you as an, an enemy or like a detractor clearly at this point I mean, yeah at this point I, i'm so. so i i wouldn't be surprised if he blocks you soon almost he's so blocked, i would um he's already blocked my co-host with my podcast so he's really him. he okay. blocked him for for basically nothing for basically doing what i've done so far we're just at him like hey release the photo like i don't think miles was mean i i, I talked with him like why did why do you block you miles and he's like just added him you know? <laughs> like I, like a, so Crazy. i have a feeling he's not gonna say anything because i think the more he says especially if he's lying the more he says that like, it could only hurt him yeah. um so we'll see it like I'll, I'll see if i can get like i really am fingers crossed rose this woman rose can contact me because i'm pretty sure it's the woman he's talking about um because people are contacting her on my behalf right now. Um, so we'll see. We'll get her side of the story. But like whatever happens, I'm pretty sure I'll make a video calling him out. Excellent. I, I think Excellent. I, I, it's, a, it's, it's I'm worth excited. doing. Because his, his video got um, like almost a million views. His video got a million views. It's one of the more popular videos he's posted recently. And he's asking for funding to do a... He, he wants to do a... He, he says he's not asking for money, but he kind of is. At the very mm-hmm. least, he's asking for attention, and um, and and uh, I don't know. He's making claims. He's making tra- claims of truth that I don't think are real. Like I, I just don't think this photo exists. Why all the secrecy? I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't think it exists either. I think it's big. <laughs> it's like big I, I want him Baloney. to be wrong. Is the thing. I, I'm like kind of an asshole about it, but like I want, I want to be proved wrong. I want the thylacine to be alive. And why? Oh, yeah. Why hide that? Why hide right. that? Because each. Each second, each day that passes where he doesn't post the photo um, and, and possibly get serious eyes to look at this photo and, and convince that the thylacine is alive is the, is the day that the thylacine in the wild, if he, be- he, if he believes earnestly that the thylacine is still alive, each day that passed, because he's wasted three years so far, is another day that the thylacine could be extinct again. Like, you know, like, yeah, we could get protections. We could get people to make legislation in Papua New Guinea to protect the sanctuary, the habitat, do all kinds of stuff. And 
hiding this photo for three years is doing nothing to help now, that imagine how awful that would be that. is he finally drops it and they go out there and then you like you it's find extinct. it but it's just dead yeah it's yeah. just like the uh, last yeah. one you like i would i would arms. make it my life's like i would be like if i was so convinced he's convinced enough to put five million dollars like that's a lie i don't have five million dollars I don't, I don't think any of us do if you're that convinced you would make this your mission to get out yeah. there as soon as possible. Yeah. But instead, he's still here. He just posted the video four weeks ago, and he, let's see what he posted on his channel. He's posting uh, totally unrelated stories, total nonsense, like about like. Yeah, I feel like he's uh, like he's filibustering. Yo, speaking he's kind of, just... of unrelated, I forgot to bring this up earlier, but you were. This isn't drama, but I was noticing because harris and i were enthralled by the thylacine tweets however mm. i i did notice after you posted your femme pictures sorry to bring this yeah. up again um the, I, I follow a couple of big trans accounts and the amount of trans chicks who retweeted your oh, yeah. statement <laughs> um of like yeah i'm comfortable being you know presenting feminine masculine androgynous i'm comfortable in my skin a lot of them took that as oh he's trans yeah I don't know. Did if you I like notice that. that? I saw that, and I don't you know did if see I that? like it. Um, I'm curious because that is kind of. It's almost like they're trying to push, uh, maybe how they feel or project how they feel. With you know, and yeah. they, their feelings are totally validated, but it, it makes me feel like my current feelings are invalid in their eyes a little bit. Um, like it's obviously like I don't think that they're malicious or something like that. No, no, like, right, um, right. Um, but I think that like it kind of invalidates that feminine. Uh, presenting men can just exist you know feminine exactly cis men yeah. can just exist mm -hmm. and i and i'm like i i've thought about it i've thought about if i'm transgender and that kind of stuff or if i want to be a, a woman and and i don't think i do like i think i'm comfortable in being masculine and being man mediterranean um, griffith yes yeah, yes. yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> i'm comfortable with that and i don't see a problem with that but no, and I, I don't. I want to make it clear though, because I think some people might hear what I said. I'm not implying that they're trying to groom you into being trans. That's oh, not no, the, no, that's yeah. not the implication, obviously. But I think it's them. It's more of them putting their own experiences projecting. and kind of yeah. projecting onto me, which hmm. it could like it. It is what it is. I don't. I don't know if it's necessarily like I, I makes me feel great. You know, like inclusive. Um, because I well, they're treating feelings, you like I a think. stepping. They're treating you like a transitional fossil, like that you're not. <laughs> that, like I can't just that it's not okay. That like I can't just stay like this. Like re, like I feel like I'm right. just gonna stay like this. Um, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's like what that, I was saying. Baby. I was saying that like if people are curious, I don't think I'm transgender, but yeah, maybe I, I don't know because I I know I have trans friends and and I dated a trans man for like uh, several years. Like I know what that experience is like um and yeah yeah i i, I know what i'm doing <laughs> well, there was I'm a doing. rumor i was a trans man and jewish but really, I, I really? The jewish still, gonna... still has not been proven false honestly well, the, their uh, main mythbusters on it the thread was on 4chan but they were saying no man could have my ass naturally and i was kind of oh like, that's awesome it's a good reason but then i'm that's picturing great. all these guys who were probably like homophobic just staring at pictures of my ass for like 20 <laughs> minutes like yeah. yeah it's a man it's a woman's ass or something which is like that's awesome. Oh, okay. I, I think there's something just innately human, like that's irritating or aggravating uh, hearing people say like, you should like, oh, you should do this or you should be trans or you should dress this way or you should do that. It's like, dude, can you just let me get to wherever I'm going on my own time? Right. Like, I don't need you to tell me how, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, I don't like, know. like I got a couple that are like, you should transition right away. You'd make a, a gorgeous trans woman. And that's a compliment, but I think it's kind of like, I don't know. It's a, it's not sensitive to like my own opinion on it. Yeah. You know? like, Let me um, do my thing. I don't know. It, like I, like I, that's the thing is like, I can't get too angry about it. Cause it's, it's probably coming from a not bad place. Right. Um, yeah. It's not it's still, it's, not, it's still, but... it's still, I don't know. It still matters. I think still, you know, it's just so. rude. I mean, it's not, even yeah. if it's coming from a not, you know, a not a mean spirited place, it's just like, you know, just mind your business. Like those really <laughs> commenters, we happen, must but... encourage Harris to transition in the comments, please. Please, yeah, I don't think I don't think I'd make a very pretty woman, unfortunately. You'd be I, you gorgeous, know, just broad. The, what are you the, talking the, about? I really do appreciate what we're talking about here, and I hate to snap back to this, but I did just do a little bit of research. I'm, I'm on Smithsonian Mag because I was curious. Okay the history of the discovery of the coelacanth, which we were yes. bringing up before, and I was I just thought curious. it was coelacanth. It's coelacanth. I thought it's it was coelacanth. It's coelacanth. <laughs> oh, but that's the pronunciation, not how it's spelled. 
It's spelled like colacanth, but okay, it's okay, pronounced okay. coelacanth. The it was discovered in 1938 on December 22nd by a woman by the name of Marjorie Courtney Latimer. She was a, I think, an ichthyologist, like a fish. Yeah, scientist? she was. Let's see, she was a. Oh, actually, she was a museum cura curator, museum curator in East London, and she was visiting the docks uh, of South Africa as part of her regular duties. And her job was to inspect any catches thought by local fishermen to be out of the ordinary. So one of the local fishermen caught this fish. They called her there on this inspection. She saw the fish and said there was a layer of slime on it. She was like, this is bizarre. Re removed the slime and said, this is the most beautiful fish I've ever seen, which is hilarious because the fish is fucking disgusting looking. But anyway, the, the uh, they ended up, she brought it back to, that was in December 22nd. She literally convinced a taxi driver to help her lift the 127 pound dead fish into the back of the cab and bring oh it God. to the museum they got it there and they were called she was calling up other museum curators other uh itch theologists like other just like scientists to study it by february it, to her best efforts everybody was trying to hide it people were or not hide it but people were like we don't know yet we don't know yet by february I think a group of them, one of the other scientists that had looked at it, couldn't, they they, they were like, we got to just put this out there. February 16th, it made public knowledge. So that December 22nd, end of December, December. it was found mid-February, the news was out. Oh, yeah. They that's were like, like a, we've discovered it. That, that's this almost was, the exact uh, timeline, amount of time for the 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 black-naped uh, pheasant pigeon, like like where it's like a month. Yeah. Noticing a trend that yeah. does not properly correlate <laughs> to the forest gallant thylacine timeline Where of like one three month, years. One month versus three. It might even be more because he's been very um, ambiguous about the dates where in 2021, that's when he's told the story publicly to a YouTuber, mm. another YouTuber. Um, but he's recounting a story from maybe a year or two years ago, 2019, 2020. So it could be four years. It could be five years. Who freaking knows? He doesn't give timeline of events. Um, it's funny that you bring up the coelacanth because Forrest Gallant uh, claims his grand, his grandpa um, helped prove, prove coelacanths weren't extinct. This has been investigated by somebody who's uh, uh, Brendan Holmes. He did a blog post that says the damage Forrest Gallant has done to conservation biology. Damn. And he disputes this claim. He he says that his dad, his granddad uh, helped secure a later specimen, um, but he was not like um, in the, On the, the forefront. He was not involved in the initial yeah. discovery. Um, so this guy's it's a kind of shit, bro. it's yeah, kind of, I'm it's, kind it's of very similar to the track record other scientists have said where he overstates um mm -hmm. his involvement yeah so it's weird and and i talked to rose's colleague so rose is the woman for Oh, you were you photo. were able to get in touch with her colleague her colleague her colleague yeah i've been in touch with her and her colleague actually is a geneticist which is silly so oh, really? rose and it has given and rose has given her samples of uh, papua new guinea singing dogs so rose is obviously a scientist and smart enough to be like yeah dna is important and we need to collect mm -hmm. samples and she could have given the sample to the scientist um but didn't but didn't. I don't know Rose's side of the story, but apparently she didn't. Now she I wonder if photo. Rose didn't take the photo, but was somehow sent the photo. Because it, it, something like that yeah. would make more sense. So it's the the detail. So it's funny you bring it up. So the 2021 version that Forrest told on the YouTube channel, it it added another layer of complexity where Rose was communicating. So Forrest was communicating with Rose. Rose was communicating with a guy with a cell phone who was talking to the guy in the village. So there's another that, layer. That makes but more sense. There's a discrepancy. Mm. He said that in 2021. The 2024 version um, removes that uh, complexity. It's it's Rose being there. It would it, his language makes it sound like Rose took the picture. Rose was there. So I don't know. We'll see. It's an inconsistency at the very least. Yes, uh, maybe he misspoke. I had this weird feeling that you were about to like blow open this crazy conspiracy. Like there, there's like, other, uh... there's other details too, where the 2021 one, 
he said that there were not two. He said it's bullshit that there weren't actually two. There was just one. And then the 2024 version, he's contradicting himself and is again saying it's two. So he, he, he's been very inconsistent. And he, I think, and this is all my personal opinion. I think he, he didn't think that people would look at the stories, you know, like, like I'm just crazy. And I went and found the story where he was interviewed on another guy's YouTube channel. So he doesn't have mm. control over it, you know, um, and finding inconsistencies with the story he told then versus now it's a classic classic uh, case for liars i'm just saying that like liars yeah. stories typically change um he's not showing any evidence to back him up he's being very secretive all of it points to this is very fishy this is very fishy definitely sounds fishy his track record of where he's been like other scientists have been interviewed where he overstates he exaggerates he uh gives incorrect information sometimes so all of it is pointing it to, but I'm like literally because I'm trying to be nice. I want to give him the benefit right. of the doubt. Just show me the evidence. Yeah, show, show me, me the show photo. me the money. I wonder <laughs> what the odds are that he watches this clip. Do you think he's look actively looking or like watching? It depends any, what we title it. This? His we should fans, title it Force Galante or something. His fans, my, he saw my tweets, so at least he saw my tweets. If you he sees your tweets, if you at him. If, and if you're of my size, you know, like if you're if you're of a, a Twitter account of my size. So he's seen something. Um, I wonder if I he saw the the because the, the the eyebrow pick that I sent you. <laughs> and then there was another one where I was like, this is a look at the check out this photo of a real life thylacine. And it was the CEO <laughs> of Petno, the dog in a suit. I love that picture. So. Well, and I, I saw a ton of people joking about, he said like this institution owns the photo and people were like, I found the institution that Forrest Gallant um, says and they were like putting like Umbrella Corp and like uh, Waylon <laughs> Utani and shit like that. It it's, silly. Real. Yeah. It, it's silly when you look at it. Like the, his story is silly where he's like an, a secret institution owns the photo in will not let me show you it like that's silly you know Dude, like, that's yeah. a silly speaking concept. of Waylon Katani <laughs> I'm still gonna eat this slop or whatever Donald Trump says about <laughs> Diet Coke I'm still gonna watch this stupid movie they're killing the alien franchise, and I'm so fucking mad, dude. I'm Wait, so what? mad. What am I missing? What happened? Alien Romulus, Remulus, Show us, show us the engineers. Bring back like, the engineers. Bring back the fucking Wait, engineers, is, there's, dude. There's a new alien movie? Wait, yeah. yeah, they just dropped the what trailer. Did you oh, watch the new the Dune, fuck? Trey? Yes, I did. I did. Was I, was, I literally was watching good. the fucking Harakins. I was like, engineers. These guys are the engineers. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fucking <laughs> engineers, dude. Oh, it really it really is called Alien Romulus. Is it are they are they really killing the franchise? What what was bad about it? They're just they don't know where to go just and remaking, they're just fucking yeah, they're just remaking making it the original. stupid, dude. Yeah. 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 It, I, I I wish they would I think probably Bring back and, that it, chick and bring back her fat bush and look, don't unedit uh, it this time. Leave her <laughs> leave the bush in. I think the problem is is that even though it, it's funny, I enjoy and I just did a rewatch uh, of of Prometheus I want to say like a couple weeks ago I literally Me just rewatched it Me too. and it, it's funny because it got like really mid reviews and I think was mostly panned by like I hate to say normie audience but like it kind of was like I think people who went into it and were like ooh sci-fi and you know this little uh, sci-fi horror it is like weird and I think like if you're a big fan of the alien franchise which I want to say I am, but the truth is, is that I really just love the first Alien movie. It's actually like my favorite it's movie fantastic. of all time. And I can't really say that I have any praises to sing for pretty much any of the other Alien movies, <laughs> including even the second Alien movie, which I think is a little like blasphemous to say, because there are even people yes. who point to yeah, it I as agree. being better than the first. But I think no, the I second Dude, one is like it suffers miles off. Like, there's a name for close. this trope, but like the first movie, the one alien is a killing machine. And then in the yeah. second movie, they're literally like pew, 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 yeah, they're like they're killing bad. aliens yeah, in like, like kill, milliseconds. Yeah. And I'm like, I Dude, know. yeah, what the there, fuck? There's something there's something <laughs> so isolating and paranoid and frightening and beautiful about the design every note in the original alien movie in my opinion is perfect and then james cameron got his greasy little hands on it and he turned it into this <laughs> fucking like 
like it's ridiculous. But where do I, I get it? Where do you go after the first one, kind of right. without and, retreading? Yes. But dude, I I love the engineers. I do. Yeah, like from Prometheus. my understanding. I, you know, I'm, I'll even give Ubaka Baka. I like their like <laughs> silly language. Where they're like, Ubaki God. <laughs> Dude, that four champ post that's like smartest, smartest race on earth <laughs> immediately wakes up and goes on retard Hulk rampage. Like, what the what fuck did he mean by up? this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But did I, from my understanding, Prometheus was mainly hated. And this is fair. This is fair. again. I love the engineers. I love the engineer design. There was something cool about alien one where you see the, the engineers, but they're in their suits. Space jockey. Yeah. But yeah, space yeah. jockey. But you, yeah. it, it was set up as in like that was the creature. It was a creature. Right. And then and it, it, there, it was kind of cringe having it like, no, it was a helmet. We actually look human. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'll give yeah. them that. I will give them that. But I, I still I like them. I think I think there's an interesting thing about the because that's that was the whole HR Geiger thing that he invented, which was just like the biomechanic thing. So they were trying to lean into that where it's like. Is it by is it by biology or is, he is bi? it technology or is he by or I mean I thought the whole thing was interesting. I loved the very final scene where they introduce the little version of the xenomorph or like a primitive version yes, of the, the deacon. Merges, the deacon. And I the love deacon. the nicknames. The nicknames are amazing. Yeah. yeah. The best and, part and, in that movie, Charlie Theron, bro. When she goes to Idris Elba and is like, I'm horny. You need to come back to my room and get in a gimp suit that I'm gonna fart into. And he's like, "Yeah, he's baby. Like, All right, like, why not? Let's go." <laughs> I thought yeah. in general they just did a really like they did a pretty good job of just hitting all the notes. Because also I think it's funny in the Alien movies, as a lot of horror movies do. Like I think a lot of horror movies do this, where they have like a gimmick that they feel the need to repeat in every single movie. In Alien, it's always having the robot guy, you know what I mean? Who and they have is... a name gimmick, too. It's They start with an A, B, C, yeah, D, E. And it keeps going on. Mm. And uh, and also, Michael Fassbender, amazing robot in that movie. Fantastic. Perfect cast, 10 out of 10 cast for that robot. He's super creepy. I love that you already know the, the robots are kind of, like, devious. So you know what to expect from him, but he still delivers, like, a good performance. It's a good movie. They oh, yeah. Could the get... soundtrack? Soundtrack. soundtrack soundtrack oh my god dude, that dude the, the body horror like he also yes. just the the cease the cesarean section scene is like hugely awesome. disturbing awesome. and awesome and it's like yes it's not a perfect movie there's a lot of it that's okay you know what the worst thing is about that movie why the fuck and i don't see anybody talking about this online why the fuck did they cast Guy Pierce as the 200 year old guy <laughs> in that movie? It looks like a normal. I age thought it was man good in a bald suit. Oh, I, I thought, it looked, I thought it looked good. I thought it looked good, dude. I like I, that he looked kind of silly because he's like insanely old. He's yeah, like but it's like, like they, they, but it, like it looks. It's the only part of the movie. Bro, I'm honestly, not gonna let you fucking really say this. Me out. No, what? you fucking uh, the Irishman. The Irishman. That looks way worse <laughs> when Robert De Niro. Not no, no, dude, dude, dude. no, and, fuck and, no, and, bro. And, and in this, it's like it, it, okay. Please, you're, okay. you're you're right. You're right. That, like, why right cast here. such a young actor? Like, why cast such a young right. actor? And, and you're barely going to show un- him young. Unconvincing. I'm sending this in the Zoom chat right now. <laughs> such unconvincing I like old man I like makeup. Him. And, Dude, and to like, me, what's what, worse is the fucking overhanded metaphor. Oh, okay, that does look very bad. Dude, he looks look like a Dark bad. Souls 2 enemy. Like, that, that, like, okay, like... granted, that scene looks bad because it's like this weird, like, Mar- like it's supposed to be on Mars and it looks yeah, all yeah. orange yes. and weird. I don't know. I, I was, uh, he does I'll, look it a little like funky. It's just, like does, yeah. it's just like, in my opinion, well, it looks like when you're playing a video game and you make the old man, the age slider all the way up and it doesn't change anything about their physical appearance. It just makes them yellow and red. Wrinkly, yeah. And it's like, why not just cast a really old person in this role? Yeah. It would have not taken away anything. And I was this time his, around. His, his makeup looks like um you ever watch Channel Awesome stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He looks like he looks like uh he looks like into boldly <laughs> Doug Walker's <laughs> brother. <laughs> he looks, he looks like, like him doing the Palpatine so makeup. Bad. And and I, and like when I was when I was watching it this time around, I went into it knowing that this was a problem I had with the movie, and I was like, maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe there's a part in this movie where he has to he jumps through a hoop or something, and they needed to cast a young guy to do this. He does 
nothing in he this does get movie. thrown though which i imagine would be harder with a older guy but it's like you don't think they they didn't actually throw guy there, pierce there's like they could... there there's a deleted scene um it's on youtube <laughs> they didn't put in the movie for some reason but it's like his ted talk in like 2030 and he's young it's it's just guy pierce um, oh, okay. so maybe so they, there was like more scenes of him young before like the that movie would was supposed explain to start. it they, the director's cut it they cut it they needed him old and you you it's can a, watch yeah. that scene that scene still exists you can watch it on youtube it's a cool there's scene tons of like... uh great cut scenes oh yeah mm. like or they like originally they translated changed... the alien the the change the scene where the they changed the guy the remember there's the guy that got the black goo on him and yeah. he like shows up and runs and you can see oh the yeah because original... he used to be more like monstery right or yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. do they dial it back? They made him more look like half more, human or something. More like alien esque, I he think. He looks more like yeah, yeah. More like what, what, Okay, I've heard I've heard this about the dialogue. Like they translated the dialogue of the engineer. I have not seen like the full transcript of it's like on that. YouTube where someone puts okay. it back in and then oh, they also nice. use a scene that was deleted where it is translated. It's it's very nice. good worth watching, but check it out. It leads into my main gripe of the fucking overhanded. I like when things are a little more subtle, bro, but the whole like, we have to find the alien. They created us. We must find our creator. And then the robot is like, but Papa, why did you create me? And it's like, no, you don't matter. This is blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, okay. right, there's, there's always the one character that has to be way too mean to the fucking robot. And I'm always like, oh, yeah. What is your problem? But I it's justified. Robot. It's fucking I mean, it justified. Is, that guy is a cunt. But I'm also like, but he also robots antagonizes in this him. world. He's also <laughs> mean. He's the guy who's mean to him in that movie, who's also the most a blatant Tom Hardy ripoff. It's like, you know, they wanted. You know what I'm talking about? Who? Not the it... guy that's in uh, Eastbound Inter- Down. I don't know. This guy, this Prometheus actor, Logan Marshall Green. Dude, no disrespect, man. But it's like, <laughs> Tom... oh my God, wait a minute. I got to give credit where it's due. This guy was married to Marissa Tomei. I just like... Oh, let's fucking Whoa, go. Really? Yeah. Wow. No oh, he literally together. is Tom Hardy. But it's literally like... Oh my gosh, like, he is Tom Hardy. It's literally just this. Tom Hardy. Like, we have Tom Hardy wow. at home. Like, this is what <laughs> this is what you get. His, his Yo, Wikipedia, you guys... His Wikipedia thing looks like a mugshot. I know, <laughs> it's, it's not a great photo. It's he has just, like an like, indent like a, on his forehead. Or a like lump someone, or something. It looks like they put, they left him too long in the microwave <laughs> and somebody put their <laughs> thumb yeah, right on his thumb. forehead like that. Poor guy. Uh, anyway. Dude, my, my one of my favorite things, I can't rock it. I got to get back in shape. Maybe I can rock it, but I'm more bulkier. You guys are thinner. You could pull it off. That like new age hoodie, but it's like a penis foreskin. It's so cool. The one guy wears it. It's like, you know how a hoodie goes over your head? Mm-hmm. It's just around the neck and can be pulled up. But I looked well, into it and the they purpose? have them. I, I don't because it because it can stick like right here. Like oh, so I, you could just cover. Your, oh, I know what yeah. you're talking about. I, that, I, that thing I, is so yeah. fashionably pleasing. Like I see That's that, it just cool. gives me tingles, dude. I love. Oh it. yeah, I actually do see a. You could rock of, that, Harris. You would look yeah. fucking banger in that. I don't know you should pick I'm it up. Wear that. Uh, but you know this also. This just makes me think in general. This movie would never get greenlit because it's be just too bizarre. But how long until we get like an A twenty four indie movie that's not afraid to go there, where we get like a sci fi that takes place completely on an alien planet? The aliens don't look human. None of it is translatable, and everything they're doing makes no sense and nothing. Yeah, this sounds like a terrible yes. pitch. <laughs> like, this is great. Sounds like an awful like, pitch. I would dude. love if they, I would love if they did like a movie like just with like in in the alien franchise about the engineers or from the first person view of like a xenomorph, and there's no humans <laughs> in it, and we just are like following the like nightmarish like, weird it's, activities it, it's like a <laughs> it's like a, a slice of life drama like romance drama or yes. something like that but on the engineer planet everybody's bald and like <laughs> <Waka Bika. laughs> yeah, like i love I you love, baby <laughs> like i would love for them to at least i'm sure they'll never green like that but they could <laughs> they could get even fucking weirder with these alien movies and if they wanted to mimic anything about the first movie it's just like tone back the epic this mm. and i don't i don't mean epic like epic i mean like literally toned back like just the it's like i feel like the curse that uh what's that what's the director i was just saying he directed cameron Avatar. 
James Cameron, the James Cameron curse that he left on the future of the Alien franchise was this need that it's like, okay, but the next thing you do has to be bigger, more explosions, well, bigger, big, more weapons, bigger bullets. Bigger like weapons, that, right? more and bullets. It's, and it's just like, they, I actually, it'd be really cool if they did one that was like way more like dialed but back. I do quiet. love the epicity, the most Reddit gayest real thing word, I've ever seen, word. <laughs> of the you feel like you're on a cargo ship. Like mm-hmm, the yeah. set design is so amazing. And that feeling of like, and it's not like a, a fancy, you know, most movies it's like you're on a spaceship and it's like uh, ground control. Beep, beep, boop, 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 and it's like mm-hmm. all fancy Christine. and cool. Yeah. yeah it's like, this is yeah. like how it would really be like a Chipotle funded cargo yeah. ship. Like of this just shit box that you're trapped in in space. Right. Like, a shitty company that doesn't that. care. Exactly. About yeah. And you're, you're right. expendable. Most yes. Them, most of them go with like NASA. Like NASA, we don't. We we'll, we'll spend so much money on just like three guys. We care about these three guys. These missions need to be highly sleek, funded, nice. And then like you're right. That's the that's the thing about the alien universe. I like is that like space travel is like shitty. It's yes. like shitty yeah. and people hate it. Like people, it's it's not fun. It, it it's not like wonder the wonder of space yeah. is gone it's all like it's truckers you're just like we oh, need I gotta, yeah exactly yeah. Go that's why Arizona. danny mcbride is so good for the the pilot <laughs> role or whatever he played i think it might have been covenant which sucks ass but uh yeah. dude we was need to that? make a Seriously. hidden figure sequel where we find out secretly it was three black women's idea to create the entire Waylon Katani space program or something. That would be okay. so fucking funny, dude. Oh, yeah, Have you, you know what Hidden cool. Figures is, Harris? Yeah, I yeah. I just looked it up and now oh, I'm aware okay. of it. Yeah, so they they, they, they did something kind of maybe a, like a little, little similar with um one of the Alien versus Predator movies at the end. They have like, they put like a, a piece of like, oh yeah, yeah. They show you Wayland, right? They show you Wayland in, in the first Alien versus Predator. And then like Alien versus Predator 2, I think, they they like he's dead and they drop a file on the ground they're like like here's the file mrs yutani and it's like this like this like woman she's like oh thank you it's and that's like the the marvel marvel kit the credits that's that's like the uh i fucking love that apparently they purposely made it like marvel because they were like making fun of it but uh i think it's the kingsman but they do the after credit scene and I'd like to introduce you to this guy. What's your name? Adolf Hitler. And that's like the Hitler origin story. And it's so fucking funny, dude. It's so oh, that's good. ridiculous. Have you, oh, you got, you've got to watch that if you haven't seen it, bro. It's it's unreal, dude. The post credit scene thing is so fucking funny. The, the, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's funny that Marvel was doing that. And then like... Do they still do that? Or do they stop? Do they get shitted on for that? They do the it for most, most of them. The, I watched Madam Web. Madam Web's a whole nother discussion. Oh, I watched but that's Madam Sony, Web. right? Or no was that Marvel? There. That was Sony. Yeah. That's Sony, yeah. Oh, but yeah, that was. Uh oh. I can't believe you didn't grab I me love, one, bro. You're such I a love bastard. Madam, Madam Dude, Madam. I haven't actually. I gotta get. A I, frame I enjoyed for it. Modern Web more than Dune. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, 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 it was literally for free at the movie theater, that but I wasn't awesome. even seeing. I was not seeing this movie. Dude, Dude, the, the fact movies, that your girlfriend so berates movie. you for taking these every, every time not. and then gets no, mad that she valuable. doesn't get one is so. It's like Ishtar. It's gonna be valuable, like the Ishtar. Sure. <laughs> if, if there's ever a point where i am like meeting what's her name dakota dakota johnson Fanny, person, i'm like johnson. please fucking sign this shit for me I, like, she's I a freak love, bro more, she gorgeous yeah. more, more she is she is gorgeous um mm. more more uh movies need to have the main character just run over the villain with a car <laughs> more often is that what happens in the movie i i really want oh, to you see haven't seen the movie i saw that no, clip but i haven't seen the movie it. it's so fucking funny like it, it happens multiple times like the oh villain sucks God. ass in that movie he's embarrassing and the fact he like is like oh, i'm a badass and then she just like runs him over with a car and he's like oh fuck what is <laughs> like he's just so cool. spider-man in a brown suit is that like the of right, pretty much the bad guy. So, so the twi- that we learn, we learn that Spider Man is basically somebody tweeted this, and it it, it is accurate to the movie. He Spider Man. I learned that sp- the spider suit, the spider suit design is cultural appropriation. It's basically like a Native American headdress uh, that these, these guys in the Amazon wear. And but um, they couldn't shoot like, webs. And they, no, they could shoot webs. I think no, no, no. 
I think they're just. Of course, Galante is, is going to see this video and start talking about, dude, I have this Amazonian address that makes you shoot webs, dude. <laughs> wait, is it? Wait, this is in canon in the books? Or no, in the you're talking about historically. Oh, uh, no, no, no. In the movie. In the movie. Sorry. Historically, oh, there's in the movie. Like, okay. No, no, no. This is in the fictional universe. I literally Spider-Man. was picturing Mayan people running around with just the Spider Man oh, no. head <laughs> no. thing on it. I was like, yeah, that makes sense, dude. It, 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 okay. okay. You say that. You say that. That's not actually super unrealistic because um, Aztecs and Mayans, if you see their clothing, it is like the most ridiculous shit ever. Like um, with the Aztecs, of course, they had the, the Jaguar Knights and the Eagle Knights where they would wear. Um, outfits that were designed to look like like it was like fursuits basically yeah where oh eagle God, warriors so would based. wear like an a created outfit that was like them in a, an eagle eagle's head like they're just wearing an eagle um check or out my new one. oc yeah <laughs> and and there's <laughs> like there's um and it's a shame that we don't have any in my, too many artistic depictions of them but we have like artistic depictions of mayans and they have just like ridiculous like they have a crocodile just on their head oh my god crocodile so on the sick. head well i think that was Giant the base design fish. for uh <laughs> tekken that character with the that beefed oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. up dude with the jaguar head like that's yeah, kind of yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah he that's is so he, uh, fucking drippy dude so drippy. he must he might be inspired by um aztec jaguar knights and stuff yeah, I can yeah. See so that. so okay so i was like so in the movie they have these guys in the amazon that dress up like spider-man or they they're the origin of the spider-man costume and um and yes they have a secret society in the amazon Oh gosh, this movie's hard to hard what, to describe. There's a guy what, that steals their their powers and appropriates it, and becomes like, and he just gets hit by a car over and over again. That's awesome. So he didn't I, get bit I, by a spider. He just he did get bit by a spider. His powers are from the spider. spider. Who wrote this shit? Who wrote well, this well, garbage? There, there was that, long, there was that <laughs> yeah. long expository sentence that everyone was clowning on in the trailer, he, where she's like, "He killed my parents in the Amazon while they were studying spiders." Like back in he, the he was years. with he was last seen with my mother studying spiders in the Amazon when she died or something. They yeah. do not. It's like, sadly, it's that line. They is asked not her. Do you guys see it's the clip where they the asked movie. her about it? What did she say? She was like, "It makes perfect sense." I, she, <laughs> I think she was mandated to say one nice thing about the movie, but uh... dude, it's crazy. The I, I saw. Did you watch the? Did you guys watch the "Your Movie Sucks" like video yes. on Madam Web, yeah. or at least just like what he could post about it? It was so funny, and <laughs> like he he calls out the director by name that he's just because I think it's her first ever directing yeah. gig. I, I love I kind of love that movie. I, I'm gonna be honest. Like people he like, said it's like, hilarious. It's a fun movie. Like like because I watch boring like I watch a lot of movies, a lot of bad movies. And like what you don't want is just a boring, forgettable piece of crap. Like you can say a lot of things about Madam Web. It is not forgettable. It is very fun. <laughs> it's very fun. <laughs> but they they're gonna see if they ever do a sequel, they're gonna see how it was treated and act like they purposely made it. I know like that, which is going to ruin it. I mean, they tried like to do that room. with Morbius, Morbius and yeah. Morbius two and more Jared Leto reading the script and Morbin time. And it's like, bro, now you think you're in on the it joke, but it. you are the joke. You, yeah, yeah. don't, don't talk. <laughs> Die. Like, the, like the best thing about like stuff that's like so bad, it's good is that it's like all honest. Like they're not trying yes, to be bad. Yeah. It's like authentic. And that's like, what's amazing about it. You're like, yes, yeah, yes. that guy, so uh, YMS love Neil Breen. Neil Breen, like that. If yeah. that guy was cognizant of the crap he was making, it wouldn't be no. as good. It wouldn't. The be as lack good. of self awareness is what makes yes. it like cultural. <laughs> YMS was in trouble recently. Not in trouble, yeah, but I there were he was, he was people mad with at some him. People because yeah, he, he said he gave a movie a six out of ten, which is actually good by his standards. But I think the movie dealt with. Was, I was like um, Macbeth movie, right? Like he was. No, or... I, I I don't. Well, I don't know about that. I'm pretty. It was a sure recent was like, one, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure the problem was that he. Wait, let me look up Two Gay to Lift. Because I like, I like, I like YMS. I like his stuff. And yeah, I think he's. It was that comedy puts, movie. He puts a lot of effort into his videos, and so I, I appreciate anybody who really does that. And I think his videos are good. I think he's funny too. I love the ones where he's watching it with his two friends. Also, like the they're so really funny. funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it was. I think it was specifically that he was criticized. Just uh, just gave like an honest criticism of like a movie that had to game do night. with indigenous people. 
I could oh. be wrong about that, but I think that's what it was. Like, I think he like, and I think he was just giving honest criticism of the movie. And I think people involved in the movie were like, "I will kill this white man," and he was like, "Dude, you this it, you cannot say this stuff. Like, you can't do that." I don't know. I don't necessarily know that his criticisms were true. You know what I mean? I mean maybe maybe I wouldn't agree with them necessarily, but. Uh, but he, he doesn't. A pe- movie, he's a movie critic. He's allowed. Yeah, to, but yeah. he's That's he a, doesn't position dumb. himself as like he. I feel like he. It's clear that he knows he's he's a guy giving his opinion on a movie. I, right. I feel like he doesn't position himself as like what I say is the truth about the movie one hundred percent, which is what all the detractors try to act like. Um, yeah, that's like he I didn't mean, choose he, to be funny and famous. Like people no, just and like I, watching and his think, shit. Like I think the credit is to like what gives him credentials is that when you watch the videos, you can be like, yeah, that's a good point. You know what I mean? Like he brings up a lot of valid, like criticisms of movies. And a lot of the times movies that he dislikes, I'm also like, yeah, I didn't like that movie either. So I don't know. I've got to just say, it's like, you can, you're allowed to like, like stuff and not like stuff. Like you can't no. like force somebody to like something, you know? <laughs> I know. Like, it's, it's true. Just, yeah. It's a little uh, silly when people get really upset about it. It is. I mean, I understand if you worked on the project and then he critiques it or maybe gives it, you know, a six out of 10 and you felt very emotionally attached, you might want to lash out, but it's like, dude, you know, maybe you should, you should expect that as a, as an artist, you, you know, like why, why release your work if you, if you're not comfortable with people saying really mean stuff about it, you know, like it's true. Yeah. yeah, you should be prepared. I'm prepared to do that. Whenever I make a video, I'm like, people are going to be super angry. I mean, like, like if I make a Thoris right. Galant thylacine uh like discussion like i know i know there's gonna be people that'd be like you're being too hard on him you're being unrealistic galante like, heads. Fine. it's like <laughs> yeah yeah the galante heads i will i do kind of wonder if we if we advertise this episode properly if we'll get yeah. any dude galante. do uh, I, I, i'll like tag that. him i'll tag him he, he do tag galante. My tweets do galante yeah. as the cover art and we'll we'll bag him we'll bag him because because uh, like if he's listening, Forrest Gallant, if you're listening, this is to you. Okay, we're talking again. It's great to talk to see you, Forrest Gallant. Um, I'm willing to do a lot to see this photo. I'm willing to do. I want to talk to the people who took the photo. I want to do all kinds of stuff. I just want evidence that this photo even exists. And uh, I think that's. I, I think I don't think that's much to ask for. So I Forrest Gallant. Is- and there might be a little think, kiss. You might get a little yeah, kiss for us. Forrest you... Galant. I like unironically, Forrest Galant. I don't know how the logistics will work. I think you live in California, um, on the, the other side of the country from me. Um, we can make out if if it if it means getting this photo out here. Like I think for for transparency, for uh like accountability, for science. This is just for science. Like, you <laughs> know how fun this would be to get this photo out here for scientists to look at i am willing to make out with you i don't know if you're into guys i don't know Let's if you're into men with long hair, but i am willing to make out with you for this photo or other things i don't know i don't like like i'm i'm willing to do a lot of stuff for us to okay to get evidence now this is exists. epic now <laughs> it's epic. This, this is what and, and i mean that i mean that i'm with. willing to make that sacrifice for this photo for this, i think if this photo is so compelling like I love the thylacine. I would love to see it in my lifetime. I I don't want any time wasted. Not another three years. So yeah, let's, do let's it. get it on footage in four K. Let's do yeah. it for us. A hundred percent. Um. All right. We we have been going for like three I hours. I just <laughs> realized. I was like, this which, feels like we've been recording for five minutes. Dude. Which, which yeah. <laughs> which every, this is such a. This is like one of the most fascinating episodes I think we've ever recorded. <laughs> we we have to have. I don't want to wait another year before we have you on next time. Well, it'll be we'll easier now because you were waiting to do the face reveal and then things right. got a little busy. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I yeah, we'd love to. Until then, it is such a blast having you on. Love having it's you fun. on. You you guys have great questions and discussion too. I, I love it. Like, Did you hear that, YouTube great. commenters? Great yeah. questions. I wasn't no, just I, interrupting yeah. with jokes. I there are great questions. <laughs> Fuck you guys. I uh we, we love having you on. I, I just feel like your your videos and your like the breadth of your knowledge is all it all hits it the all, breasts hits all the of points, your knowledge. The yes. breadth of your knowledge oh, yes, it hits yes. all the things that I love to talk about. So like I I feel like we didn't even cover everything that I wanted to mention. So we have to have you on again, hopefully very soon. And <laughs> if there are developments along the way with this forest situation. I would love to talk through them. So maybe in the next, oh, yeah. maybe in the next. Oh, DM. Week. I mean, even he, if we don't record goes, it, DM goes us. On, 
Yeah. He 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 goes on um podcasts and talks on them. Like he went on Joe Rogan and stuff. He went on um another Could guy. Could we Cookie. get a Galante yeah. Trey going? Yeah, I would love to talk to you. Like, that would like, be I'm interesting. Not, I'm not to get a hold of him. That would be really like, cool. I, like Forrest Gump. I'm I'm not perfect. I'm not great with debates or anything you are. Like that. You I'm are not perfect. a debater. Uh, <laughs> you but but I'm totally willing to talk to you. Like I want to get your side of the story because you've you, you've been. I don't know. All I've seen so far is like bits and pieces of what you've been willing to tell. So I'd like to talk to you firsthand. You know, like I hope if, I so hope so if he does it. see this, it becomes clear that Trey's not your enemy. And if if you are yeah. telling the truth, Trey will be the first guy to stand up and support you. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, not I will, not to like you're telling threaten, the truth, but if you're telling the truth for us, like I will like help fund this expedition. I don't know kiss. how much. I don't know what I'm willing to to pay. I'm I'm not like made of money, but I'm willing to help fund this expedition if we can confirm now, that this jaw exists and it's real. Would yeah. you, if Forrest offered, you, say he makes his five million and says, Trey, will you come along with me? on this little Ooh. adventure would that be something you'd be interested in uh yeah 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 i'd be interested we, we'll have to talk about the logistics of i have life stuff you know i can't just like get up and leave but bro it's um, the thalassine it is the, the thalassine okay is it okay if we up. can if we can prove that the jaw actually did belong to a thalassine um which is difficult because it's a picture um but if we get a consensus okay let's say let's let's get a scholarly consensus of zoologists that agree that this is most likely a thalassine yeah. I will I will go on this expedition. I will I will help contribute to the funding and I will go on the expedition. Wait, Powerful. Th- maybe I, I know we should wrap, but I have one question that I'm curious yeah, about. Yeah, is yeah. What what percentage of scientists would like need to say, like, I believe this is probably a thylacine like, to, to make you believe that it's like compelling evidence? Um, let's say um, because the thing is, because especially with thylacine, I know what zoologists have said about it, where it's actually very just difficult to tell the distinction between a wolf or a dog mm. and a thylacine, especially with just bones. And um, so I'd have to see the photo. Um, it's difficult to tell the difference, but let's say, um, let's say like I don't know, sixty or, or who like Six, okay, let's little over like, half, little over like, half. Let's say. Or... Yeah, let's get like um because I know a couple. Like I'd want Darren Niche. Darren Niche, he's a great zoologist. He he does like cryptozoology stuff. He has an interest in this. I would love his opinion. Like I would want him to agree that this is likely a thylacine. Um, because I trust him. I know him and I trust him and I know his work. Um, we'll have to ask a couple others. I I like I like I want at least like let's say like 20, 20, 20 scientists, 20 zoologists yeah. to look at the photo and go yeah. on record going like yeah, this this is most likely a thylacine, you know. Like I don't want I I feel like because because the especially if it's like warped, like we don't have the photo, so this is all like hypothetical. I don't know how good the photo is. I don't know how good the the jaw is. Um, like I don't know how much evidence it would be. Like even if Forrest releases it tomorrow, all right. I don't know how great of evidence it would be. Um, until I I hear professional opinion and stuff like uh, like because how he describes it it was warped it was all gnarly looking those are his words I want to see this damn photo I so see like it. what how much what could it tell us but apparently it's compelling enough to warrant five million dollars so expedition mm. to the region it, it convinced him it convinced Forrest apparently so mm-hmm. I think we're throwing so, uh, some shade uh, but yeah I 100 percent agree I I think we need to see the we need to see the fucking show us the thing. Show, Show us, us the photo. Why not? Whip it out, Why not? Blur, blur, Whip it like, out. If you're worried, if you're worried, okay, if you're worried about it revealing the location, blur everything around the jaw. Why not? Why not? Then we will have literally no no data. You can scrub the, the, yeah. the digital file of all the data. Um, you can you blur can... it. Like just have the jaw visible. Like if you're worried about that, we can settle that. We can settle that worry that you're worried about the location being revealed. That's fine. We'll settle that. He, this institution, put us in contact with this institution that owns the photo. Give us their name, and uh, we're, I'm willing to talk to them. I'm willing to. Willing These to are our demands. These, These are our are demands. Our demands. We and, want and release to see the it. photo so scientists can look at it. Because why release not? Release the photo. I 100% agree. Show us the damn thing. Uh, <laughs> so that's it. I I have nothing. I like. I I've read I some of the stuff that's been said about Forrest Gallant makes me um a little suspicious of his character or whatever. But in this particular instance, I have nothing against you. I literally just want the photo. I've, I'm using my power, my influence, whatever I have, 
to help this photo get out because I don't want it being hidden for another three years. Because that's what it, that's what's been the case so far. You talk about the photo, you say it can't be released, and three years later you post a video and it still can't be released apparently. So let's speed this up. You know, if the thylacine's out there, let's speed this up. Show us the damn. And I'm willing to thylacine. apologize for 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 doubting your story ever. I'm willing to to apologize for that. But until I see anything, I think I have every right to say that this story isn't true. This photo might not exist. It probably doesn't exist. So. Yeah, I think I'm totally within my rights to say that as based, as a scientist. Based. Powerful. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going on again. I'm getting off my soapbox. No, it, on my soap scientist on episode. scientist action. That it, we we need. <laughs> we just want answers. I just want answers. Uh, okay, here, the, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. First, well, obviously, well, Trey, I'll, I'll get to thanking you in just a second because I want to give you a very long, illustrious thank you. But the first, I want to say thank you to anybody who's been watching. We have a Patreon. I think there's a possibility that some of this episode might end up on Patreon. We're going to figure that out because there was so much interesting stuff. But anyway, the, um, if you want to be part of the community and watch a bunch of episodes that we have uh, backlog, we've got like 100 Cold Cuts episodes that are pod, uh, Patreon exclusive. You get early access to Beetle Comics, early access to Yolo Comics, all kinds of crazy stuff. And you get to be part of a really cool community, the Discord that's at the lowest tier, you join in there, and it's a great community of people. We'd love to have you over there. So that's patreon.com slash cold cuts. These are our executives at the executive tier. We have Bugs on My Wee Wee, Big Tasty, Brat Brat Pew Pew, Conga Heli, Francho, Gizan, HP, Limp Dick, Dilbert Text, uh, Maze vs. Corn. Protista, Protagon, Shrek the Third, Shalom Guy, and Trevor Stilson. Holy shit, the executives are popping <laughs> off right now. Uh, love you guys all so much. Thank you for all of your support. Thank and you. then, yeah, you guys rock. Trey, thank you. This has been like such a fun episode to record. What a blast, dude. What a oh, blast. thank you for having me. Sorry if I ramble. Sorry if I ramble. No, I love no, when you ramble. Was... I can listen to <laughs> you talk for hours, said, Doug. It, there was not a word wasted. Every, everything was everything. The Greek was sex part, I was very fascinated, enthralled. Honestly. Yeah. Oh, it was a pleasure uh, being here. I had, I, I had so much fun. You guys are a great conversation. I, I love it. I, I feel it. the same way about you. It's been great. I, I hope to have you on again real soon. And I'm very fascinated to see what happens with this thylacine in, uh, like situation. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be keeping my eye out. Extremely closely. Sure. Uh, and uh, I guess that's it. 